<laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. So how about now, audience? Can we hear Audience me? member, can you hear us now? <laughs> can anyone hear me out there? Out in radio land. Now, they now can. we can. Yes. All, All right. right. Thank you. Awesome. So in okay. conclusion, so, that was Ansible Operators. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now that exactly. we're done. Thank you for um, now that we're done. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. No, that was a mistake on my part. There was something I had to unmute that I didn't see and I forgot to scroll down. My bad. Sorry. Still figuring this piece out. Um, so hi, everyone. Welcome to our second stream ever of uh, <laughs> the Red Hat OpenShift team. Clearly. Twitch channel. Yes, <laughs> yes we, we do things live here. Uh, we're very happy that we have this outlet and we have the uh, capability to, you know, learn in public. So we greatly appreciate that. Today, There'll be some learning in public for y'all, hopefully. Uh, two of my friends here, Jason Doby is from uh, our developer evangelist team, is here. And also my fellow Red Hatter and technical marketer teammate, Christian Hernandez is here. And today they will be talking about building the Ansible operators from scratch, which is something I am definitely familiar with and definitely love. So when they said, hey, we're going to do this on the air live real quick, I was like, yes, let's do it. We can do this as much as we want. Let's go. So without further ado, Jay, Christian, take it away. Christian, I'll let you start. Um, <laughs> just because we didn't really yeah. plan any other way, so I'm going to throw you yeah, under yeah. the bus. Now, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. this actually, I've already seen a question about this Couch BD, CouchDB demo. I mean, we could get to at some point where we throw that up. That's a fairly yeah. easy thing to run. Um, but let's, let's um, yeah, I mean, let's yeah, start with that's... what you had planned. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, you know, what I had planned is uh, we'll do it live, right? Is uh, how, how about let's let's um, let's take kind of the 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 things that I have a um, operations background, and um, there's a lot of uncertainty from the operations folks, especially the ones I've talked to. Um, you know, when we were able to go out, right, at Summit and at at, at meetups of uh, like, what's like this whole Kubernetes cloud native thing? How does it affect me, right? So. Um, and I think uh, one of the cool things that we got is, um, in terms of, of technology at Red Hat is the, the operator framework and how that plugs into, um, cloud native, um, approaches and things like that. It just fits perfectly. And I think Ansible is just like a natural fit for operators, right? Um, in, when I say operators for the op folks, um, and they, how they can, continue using whatever it is that they're using, but then plug that in in a cloud native way. So I, I just thought, um, hey, let's, let's, let's just build one from scratch. Let's just, let's just try to deploy something. And, um, and I know I got your help here, right? So you, you being a, from the dev background um, could help me along, along the way. So um, cool, cool. So um, what do we have for a sample application? What are we actually gonna write an operator for? Yeah, so I have, um, so I have a few things, right? So I have a couple of apps. So I have just a standard welcome, um, welcome PHP application, right? So if, um, oops, I'm on the wrong window. Um, um, welcome PHP, right? So I have a welcome PHP app that is just basically a dumb, um, uh, a dumb splash page, right? Just a kind of, um, you know, to kind of test OpenShift, right? Any, anytime I, I deploy OpenShift, I have a, a, a smoke test app. And this is the smoke test app. When I That's deploy, I'm like, all right, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I, I'm, 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 I come from a web background. So a PHP is always, um, uh, always the easiest path to least resistance. And then I have something called PHP Priceless, um, which I think would be maybe even more interesting um, to set up because it has a database backend, right? So I have an application, I have a work, a work um, uh, a workflow, right? Where I can deploy a backend database. I have, uh, you know, front end web. It's a simple CRUD um, application. Um, this may be a little bit more complex, but actually, it may be a little bit more fun to uh, to try to have Ansible deploy for us. I think so. I, I think we got to go with something at least like this because the single apps. The problem with and I don't know how much your plan was to talk about what operators are. We should probably circle back on some concepts. Yeah. Oh, but no, but I think that's where we should start first. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the problem, this is probably a good context setting because the problem with um, understanding kind of where they're useful is any application that's going to really kind of flex them and show the coolness is 
by definition, kind of a pain in the ass to describe. So the single hello world app ones don't really do justice because the entire time everyone's sitting there going, I could do this with a manifest. I could, I could, I literally just did this with a manifest yeah. while you were talking. What are we doing here? Um, I like this one. I like this one. I think the first thing we do is we submit a pull request to correct the uh, spelling of price list in your readme because- Yeah, yeah. I, I actually just saw that as you- Because <laughs> <laughs> that's going to peg my OCD something fierce. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm like, whoa, I just saw that. Okay. <laughs> um, that'd be a good, uh, that'd be a good uh, PR. All right, cool. Check. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's actually, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about operators. What, 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 what is an operator? Right, like what? How, where do we? How do we define that? Right, what, what? What's an operator? So let's take a step back further than that. Let's go. Why are we talking about these? Because mm -hmm. um, it's going to sound like airing dirty laundry, but at yes, Red let's Hat, just we do it. Tend to, <laughs> That's what this channel's for. Let's just air the dirty laundry. All right, let's let's run with it. So it's, th it's therapeutic. Internally, we tend to talk about them. Um, quite a bit uh, and, and really like they're this amazing answer to everything. Um, and, you know, they're a tool um, with, with a specific, very wide range, but at the end of the day, they, they have a, a purpose to trying to get it and they have problems that they're best suited for. So um, let's start with the why. And, and I had just seen, um, something today i can't pull up the slide itself because it has this nice confidential thing on it which uh I, I don't think that's a really good start for the channel if 10 minutes in i'm pulling up confidential red hat slides but yeah. conceptually um what this slide was talking about was um I, there was two specific breakdowns i really liked in there one was update versus upgrade mm -hmm. and then one was unmanaged versus managed services so um i'm already a little further in the weeds than i want to be though so Getting a simple application out, as I was just kind of half joking about with the hello worlds and our PHP webs and our Python webs and, and whatever the language people use. Um, I think, you know, I think it really is funny though. It goes to show like the person, mm -hmm. like, what is your sample app? Like what language do you use? Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> like, I feel like I know. We, so Christian and I, let's, Jesus, let's go back even further. We got three hours on this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Christian and I are on related teams in the cloud platforms business unit at Red Hat. So um, my, what I, the way I describe developer advocacy is I do cool shit with OpenShift and then I run around telling people about it to get them excited for it. Um, and that was much better definition and I could actually go someplace instead of being stuck in this room, but it, it still kind of applies. Um, Christians is very similar in the sense of doing cool shit and running around telling people about it. Um, so our teams tend to uh, work together in a lot of ways. And this, this is not the last time that we're gonna have these crossovers. I know Josh on our end is on Wednesdays. Is it you again, Christian? On, on Wednesday? Wednesday? No, no. Okay. I, I... Uh, that's fine. Josh. Josh. Josh and Eric are doing their own thing on Wednesday. Eric, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Eric, um, there we go. I, without his and, video, and by the way, Eric's sample application is is Ruby on Rails. So it, that tells you a lot about people, right? So um, <laughs> I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good indication of the person, right? Some people are P Python people. I do PHP. I'm a web background. And then all of a sudden, Rails, I'm like, I haven't heard that. That's a, what was that mean? Like, I haven't heard that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, this, all right. Let's see how many like uh, up to Star Wars references we can Yeah, play. exactly. I haven't heard that name in quite some time. That's one, start the ticker. I yeah, also they're... like the fact that he's not on video and Chris Short jumps in with- And just jumps in, he's like ominous God. voice. He's, yeah, yeah, he's like- We're just like casually talking. He's like, <laughs> Eric and Josh are going to be talking. Like, yeah, really exactly. Um, and uh, Eric, what are we trying to say? I mean, seeing as we have, you know, the, the first three hours of, of you not being able to respond to us quite a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> what the hell was I talking about now? Um, sample applications, blah. Okay, so those sample, no, our teams. Uh, so yes, um, Christian and I are on separate teams. We haven't actually, this is kind of cool because this is our first real time presenting together. Um, and, and that whole PHP thing, it's kind of interesting to <laughs> get to know the people, and like we said about Eric. <laughs> um, I tend to gravitate more toward the Python, although I will do Java if I have to. Um, but hell, on the on a, I mean, I guess I can plug the IBM Developer Advocate stream. We're all one big family now. One exactly, yeah. Spectacular family. Um, we actually got COBOL running on um, OpenShift uh, last week or two weeks ago, which says all sorts of things about our good friends over at IBM. 
because he was so happy. Gray beard, like literal gray beard. Dude's amazing. He's so much yeah. fun <laughs> to present with. I'd love to get him on this channel at some point because he's a blast. Okay, going all the way back to operators. Um, yeah. Circling we'll, back. Yeah, circle <laughs> back. Right. We'll, get, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll get there eventually, yes. This is why people are like, you really stream for three hours? I was like, don't underestimate my ability to go. Especially yeah, we, we, can, we can chat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, sample applications are, are pretty simple to get out there. Um, you know, de deploying these hello world applications, um, even in COBOL, uh, not that difficult to get out there. But what happens when you have interactions? What happens when you have something like this uh, purse list until he renames it um, yes. <laughs> that, uh, as a database? Um, the other samples I have are front end, back end database types of things. Um, what happens when they get bigger than that? And the, the typical example is usually a database. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm curious about whoever asked about the Couchbase demo because, um, OK, uh, I just caught up on that. But um, the Couchbase demo itself is actually pretty badass for this because it shows that um, to get a Couchbase cluster out there looks like it's three pods. And then you want to scale it up to four. And you would think, OK, I know how to scale things in OpenShift. I'm going to say replicas is four, life goes on. And it's actually not that simple because all of the actual couch based magic happens in the rebalancing and mm -hmm. their cluster logic and all of that good stuff. So we can't just tell Kube, we can't just tell OpenShift, give me another pod. Um, it's got to do something. And that is at the most fundamental level where operators come in. The fact that you can't just use basic Kube constructs like that to yeah. gain the specific application level knowledge. Yeah, the most the most common use case that I like to like to do because uh, I, I get asked a lot, um, like, well, you know, how is this different than Helm? And I'm like, you're you're, you're asking whether or, and it's and it's it's, it's um, yes and, right? So it's it's really um, it's really more than just like you said, deploying an app. Uh, the, the example that I give is like, what if you have a schema change? How do you automate that? How do you automate? You have a schema change, and you need to automate that distribution of you know that that deployment of that application along with the database, along with the schema, along with all of that. There needs to be operational knowledge in that automation. So that's 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 really, I guess the the first and foremost, the example I like to give is like, what if you have just like a database schema change? How do you how do you roll that out using two uh, constructs, right? I'm glad you mentioned Helm too, because that was the context of the slide that I'm, I'm hinting at, but not showing is that um, <laughs> update versus upgrade. Like I can use a Helm chart to update um, the image that the cluster is running, sure. Um, but that's not an upgrade operation. That's not doing the schema updates like you just mentioned. That's not doing any of these more complicated things. And like coming from the dev side of thing, upgrade is always a problem. Like it's across the board, every project I've ever worked on. And it doesn't help that, you know, we, I tend to associate with like the, the more like, oh, cool, we're just going to get stuff done. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, we have a product we have to maintain. So yeah, yeah, exactly. we, we can't just throw away the version one and, and use version two. Uh, so I've been in that position where I've been told, no, dumbass, you got to go back and actually find a way to upgrade this. And yeah, then three yeah, months later, exactly. I was kicking myself. Um, so all of that, actual logic um, should live somewhere. Uh, when we do this slide for, um, I'm sorry, when I do this presentation, there's a slide deck I've used that has um, the phrasing, anything that's not automated is wasting your time. So um, if I have to do this manually, uh, <laughs> Get yelled at the other day for saying this, but I'm going to do it again anyway. Users are dumb. And if I have to yeah, put it on the <laughs> user to do it, they they're may screw it up. Um, so there's no, what to say? There's no patch for human error or human stupidity. What was the, <laughs> there's I, no patch I, it yet. better be stupidity. And if not, yeah, yeah, exactly. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do we, how do we automate that? How do we get that stuff out of the user's hands and, and how do we get it across in code? So these are the kind of problems that operators are trying to solve. Yeah. And also, it's it, it goes just beyond the. I mean, the operators leverage the uh, the control loop in Kubernetes, right? So the um, the uh, reconcile. Yeah, the reconcile loop, the um, the whole CRD, right? Custom resource definition, and and um, it leverages those technologies. But it goes, I think, goes a little bit beyond that as well because it it's more than just like you said, give me a pod, right? It's more than um, you know, I want to scale is more than just adding a pod to that, right? So there's this, how, how do you, um, how do you automate operations and how do you, and how do you manage that at scale? And I think that's, that's the, that's, that's the, 
the, the, the main focus of what operators are supposed to do. So. And, and you're also starting to dip into what they are because we keep mm -hmm. talking about them as if they're some kind of weird black magic thing. And I think yeah, that, black box. Yeah, yeah and, at and times it can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's fair. Um, yeah. But it also comes down to like, you know, people don't realize that tangibly it's just the stuff you're used to seeing. It's a pod. At the, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's not something you've done where you're hacking code directly into Kubernetes. It's not like you're breaking the schedule or anything weird like that. It's a pod running in your cluster. And start there. And then you build from there. This is the third time now I've clicked away that cookies uh, message and not realizing this is your screen and not mine. Oh, uh, okay, okay, there you go. <laughs> um, I'm like, damn it, that's really dragging You're like, nuts. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, do, do I do I trust Red Hat by my cookies? I don't know. I'll, I'll uh... close this so I stop clicking it. Yeah, so you didn't just cookies. leave it open to mess with yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> that would have been precedent for a long three hours. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a pod, and then you mentioned custom resource definitions. So these mm -hmm. are built into Kubernetes. They were very recently taken out of beta uh, into a full-blown construct. Um, you want to describe what a CRD actually is? Yeah, so um, so just, well, we have three hours, right? I can go as, as, as deep as I want. Okay, but plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> so in, um, in, in, uh, in, in Kubernetes, right? So in Kubernetes, we have things like, um, like pods, right? Like we have these uh, these objects, right? So we have pods, we have things like deployments, we have things that are built into the API uh, that are used um, uh, to uh, to control certain aspects, right? I'm, I'm trying to simplify this as much as as much as I can. Um, and so, um, what if you have other things you would like to control, right? So, what if you have like right now you can do kubectl, kubectl, kube, whatever you want to call it. I heard someone call it kuboctal the other day. I'm not sure. Um, what the, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's. Okay. I, I don't know. I think that's that's another whole uh, sudo, sodo, uh, sodo, whatever um, topic. But anyway, um, kubectl. You can do kubectl get pods. What if you want to do? What if you have something else that you want to control um, using the Kubernetes API or using that control loop, using that that watch of of um, uh, in, in inside of what if you want to leverage that inside of Kubernetes? What if I want to do OC get my DB? Um, custom research, the, the, the way you're originally you're supposed to do it, it's supposed to do in tree, right? You're supposed to actually do it in tree in Kubernetes code. You have to submit, you have to like write that in. Um, now they, they took that out and saying, okay, well, you can custom define those now. So CRD is custom resource definition. Now you can define um, what when you say oh, uh, kubectl get my db, now it'll return whatever you define that as. It'll return you know either your db instances or um, it'll say no resource not found, which is different than API not found, right? So it's um, it's a way to define um, some of these objects inside of Kubernetes that you were that you were normally found, right? as in pods or, or de deployments or things like that. So um, it's a way to add that in functionality into Kubernetes. Yeah, you just hit on, this will be cool when we actually see it live because I've, I've usually show this too. I do an OC get or a kubectl get um, something and you just type in garbage and you see it come back and say, I don't know what you're asking me. Um, and then you get one that, um, where you have the CRD deployed and you're suddenly getting a different message. It's not quite an error, it just says no resources. Um, so we'll actually see that once we get started. Um, I, I just, I keep getting distracted because y'all in chat are just batshit crazy already. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, yeah. This is usually how it ends up going too. Like how far back old school can we take it? Like XML, and that kind of scares XML, me that yeah. XML is considered old school now. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I, I was around before XML. Um, it's funny because every time I use Maven, getting back to like weird languages, weird, uh, ever getting back to different languages, whenever I have to drop back into Java and I use Maven, I'm like, you guys are sticking wow. with XML. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, they're still, they're, they're, they're riding that horse. They're yeah, going to die on that that's, hill. <laughs> that's a lot of text you're going to write, but yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> good for you guys. I don't think Gradle uses it. I haven't actually learned Gradle yet, but Every time I like, because you, you can't open it up and you just kind of sit back and you're like, oh my God, there's just, just. Yeah, it's just too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, like one of those, I, I, I think like a picture is going to come out. Have you ever seen like those? Yeah. Little, you stare at <laughs> it long enough. Pictures. Yeah, exactly. A picture comes out. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. God, I can only imagine the kind of stuff we would get to on like what the uh, picture would be, but we'll let chat have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had chat fun with it. <laughs>
But yeah, 32 characters to express version 1.0. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how do you want to do this? Do you have the PHP price list running someplace that you can quickly show us? You know what? Let's do it this way. How about you just yeah. deploy that first without an operator and we see what it looks like? Cool. Um, I guess first I need, um, where's, where's, where's God? I need his, I need the credentials for that uh, cluster he has up and running. I emailed him to you. Oh. Uh, it should be in your inbox sitting right it there. It should be in my inbox, yes. So what okay. you did, uh, Chris, 4.3 uh, instance, I guess? I did a 4.3. If you want a 4.4, four, I have one that I spun up kind of off to the side. Let me see if I can load up my email. This is... Um... If not, I can pass the, the details to you. No, that's and, fine. I'll, I'll just open my email here. <laughs> that's exactly what we want. Um, <laughs> this is good. Bring up top so we can all get completely. Yeah, yeah. So you can see. Yeah, yeah. Look at, look at um, well, if you, if you want, finally resource talk. consuming Zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You, uh, so you did you did email me the um, the uh, the credentials. So I'll do that. Um, okay. Do you? So do well, you, he pulls that up. Um, yeah. Very quickly, we have an internal system we use to set up our clusters, which is not terribly interesting to hear about. But um, this is going to be an OpenShift 4.3. Um, everything we're going to do will uh, run on Kubernetes. Uh, at the end of the day, and I'm the guy that always kind of beats this drum because I'm tired of seeing it kind of used against us, is that OpenShift is built on top of Kubernetes. OpenShift is Kubernetes, so we didn't fork it and add in any of this stuff. These are all built-in native constructs, and we could do this on Minikube if we want, and I've done yeah. similar things on Minikube. Um, we just happen to be using OpenShift in this case for, I mean, the obvious reasons. No one coming to this channel is going to be like... Uh, you know, oh shit, you're using OpenShift. Um, but at the end of the day, just be very clear, like this is all built on top of Kubernetes constructs. This is stuff that we could do outside of OpenShift. Um, and, and I'm gonna mention that because I don't want it to seem like, um, you know, we're adding this stuff outside of the tree and we're not contributing it back or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the right. obvious reasons that'll become clear over the lifespan of this channel, why you would want to use OpenShift, but um, it's important to realize before this kind of gets thrown in our face from, yeah. you know, shady competitors. Oh, <laughs> don't, okay, well, don't I'll call always... that. Don't call <laughs> things. <laughs> I didn't Come say names. Come on now. I didn't say, <laughs> I, uh, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll actually use Kubernetes and OpenShift interchangeably, and, and I actually don't do it on purpose. That actually just happens naturally. That happens um, to me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, only because you know I you know I being, still use K for a lot of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, I use kubectl. Like, um, yeah. I, I I use that a lot just because, um, you know I go being a being a geek, right? I I have Kubernetes bare Kubernetes clusters running, and I have mm -hmm. OpenShift cluster. I have like all kinds of clusters running. So, um, so I will so, say one thing real quick: mm -hmm. the operator framework is in the process of being donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So nice that is a big piece of like what we're trying to give back to the community and here. That's is. what I'll be using later is the operator framework. So that's, right. that's a good. So yeah, that's a good segue into that. But yeah, like CRDs that came out, uh, went GA and 116 operator framework uses a lot of that. So now is a good time to use operator framework and donate it to CNCF. Yep, cool. So yeah, I should know to... the answer to this. You uh, said you have a 4.4 cluster available. Has that actually gone GA yet? Was that today? Today, uh, yep. GA today, it is in the fast channel. If you want it right now, switch to your fast channel in your OpenShift clusters, and off you go. Yep. The voice of God with the quick. The voice. Of, that's right. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> I kind of like booming you voice. The, you have the voice for it. I really think you should lean into this and just randomly yeah, drop and it. Yeah, just own it. it. <laughs> 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 just, just do all the stuff that we we don't really want to be saying here, and you're just like, by the way, OpenShift is a Red Hat product. Yeah, yeah, I don't exactly, know how my voice exactly. sounds when I do that. <laughs> no. um, yeah, and Sebastian, that's the Dev Nation stuff I'm going to do is going to run just the Kubernetes as well, um, and just use kubectl. It's just lighter weight footprint on my system, but I also have code ready containers in my basement if I needed it. Uh, anyway, so 4.3, 4.4 um, yeah. release. It's a three kind of as we speak. 4.3, right? Yeah, I'm looking at the left side. I just pointed it to my screen. Okay, cool. Uh, four out three, yeah. Four out three. Um, cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, we got a cluster here. So let's just, just like like you said, Jason. Well, I'm just gonna deploy this how I would normally. Um, I guess I could do the developer uh, view here. So we'll do that. Um, actually, I need to. 
I need to add a project first. So I have to do that administrator view. Uh, projects. This is one of the um, the feedbacks I gave to the UI the UI teams. Is like I, I need I need be I need to be able to not have to go back and forth. So um, wait, you, if you use the drop down, it wasn't available in there. Like a create. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you see how often I use the UI here. Um, wait for what were you trying to do? So the top left for project defaults. Add. No. Uh, oh, you mean here? Gotcha. I'm pointing again. Oh create yeah, button. I'm yeah. No, I should see where you're pointing. <laughs> yeah. Second gotcha, time gotcha. in that, like 30 Look seconds. At that. I learned something there. So we're, you know, you know, there not even are. that long in. I'm already learning something here. So let's take that step back though, because you're you're right about the concept. So the developer console, mm -hmm. the developer, I don't think we're calling it that anymore. Developer view. The uh, view, I think. Yeah, view? developer no, view. We'll I think. View. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is new in four dot oh, shit, three, two, three. Yeah. Um come on, God, say it. No, I, I, I heard a siren in the background right as I was about to say 4-2. So I, I, th I thought for a yeah. second, I was like, oh, maybe maybe it was 4-2. I forget. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, so uh, a new spin on uh, the same types of concepts. Now, if you're familiar with OpenShift 3, um, the, the previous series where this was much more of baked in, uh, a lot of the stuff is starting to come back now in this developer view. So this may look for more familiar to you if you come from a very long um, OpenShift perspective. That's the word. Um, I, so earlier I tweeted about this and I said the debut uh, session and about an hour and a half later, I was on a bike ride and I'm like, inaugural, that's the word. Inaugural. I was, oh, yeah. I was like this close <laughs> to like pull on my bike over and just retweeting should be like, inaugural, damn it. That was going to bother me. The perspective, <laughs> developer perspective that we're in right now. As I fling a dice across the table. Um, mm -hmm. This looks a little more similar to what they did in OpenShift 3. Um, yep. You know, it does feel a little awkward to be drawing these lines between developer and admin, in my opinion. And this actually comes from one of my teammates who's pretty mm -hmm. solid about beating the drum for, hey, we always talk about DevOps, and then we're actually drawing this giant line in this giant line. <laughs> yes, guy, exactly. <laughs> where you're a developer, you go over there. Yeah. Um, but that said, this has some different things to it. So uh, as Christian was alluding to, not everything is available here. I'm pretty sure routes yep. are not quite here yet. Um, they're working very diligently. It's actually a really cool team. Um, they do public, uh, Jan, I think you're in chat. You can mention um, the open office. Oh, Jen's on, hi Jen. Uh, the open office hours um, that the UX team does. I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. But. Um, so they're working really hard on 4.4, 4, 4.5, 4, 4.6, and the kind of different things they're going to add to it. Uh, so, you know, your, your point was not wrong that, hey, there's certain things that aren't available over here yet and that they're coming across. It's not that we just kind of gave up and gave developers this yeah. kind of small view well, on it. Also, I think we, we changed framework, right? <laughs> and so it, essentially, it's not like we could just run it on, on, on 4.4. Like we changed the framework on how the UI I forgot what we're using on the back end now. Before it was, I think it was Ajax or something like that. Some, some really. I, Is, forgot, I forgot what it was. And I'm confusing too with other projects too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the routes. So that's a great point by Jan. So we're going to see that in a minute. Um, yep. Well. Yeah. So we. I, I mentioned routes as the example. You'll see there's no menu item for it. No creating it. But when we get into that topology view, which you can see on the left side that I'm going to refrain from pointing to, um, <laughs> you'll see that once we get into that, there's actually a way to find a route from there. So I'm going to shut up now that you actually do something. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm actually, I have a question. So uh, Chris Short, when, yes. when, he, when, he, when he was doing, uh, when you were doing a, a stream, you, uh, you named all your stuff after Spaceball characters. So I don't know what to name my project here. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know uh, we, what we should choose. Um, for, for might I might I have a suggestion? Maybe uh, people it? from the Rebel Alliance. You know, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Star Wars I, I Day after all. I did the Flintstones when I did uh, my stream with Eric. It's R R two T two. Okay, so Eric says R two D two. So I'll say R two D two. There, there you go. go. So um, display name. So it's a human readable name. Um, I like that we paused on that. Let's just acknowledge the fact that we actually had that discussion because this is something that it's a serious there. discussion. Yeah, it is a serious things, discussion. Yeah, naming things is important. It 100% is. I have a buddy of mine that I always go to for this kind of stuff. I'm like, all right, I'm setting up a new demo application. I'm like, what am I going to call it? He's like, all right, well, let's think about this. What does it do? Do we want to go like mythology? Do we want to go sci-fi? And, you know, way more time is spent on that than I probably should. Then you probably should have. That's right. <laughs> 
Oh, Planets. Planets. I do like the Planets route. I like the I Planets named, idea. Yeah, yeah. I name Hoth, my, my PCs after uh, ships from various um, shows, uh, especially. I'm, yeah, Chris. My naming convention is Looney Tunes characters. Okay, I had uh, I had uh, Warcraft realms for a while. I had mm. ships, so I had Star Wars ships. I had you guys uh, doing cool things. I, I did mine after birds, so I had like <laughs> so I had like Falcon, Eagle. Um, what was the other Robin? And I need to get more. There's uh, <laughs> there's uh, a grackle. That's the kind of bird that's around here. It's really grackle. cool looking. It's grackle with a G, not crackle. Grackle. Oh, grackle. So it's actually it has gold eyes, a black head, and like a purple body. It's wild looking, and like that'd be a cool name for some spaceballs esque system. Yeah, that's out right. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it so, also makes me a little bit yeah. scared to ever go to Michigan because what you just described is kind of horrifying. Yeah. And it's actually a rather beautiful b- bird once you get past the gold. Like if it looks at you, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> big thing to get past. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I'm gonna do a source to image, right? So then play from a Git re- repository. Um, I think Chris, you did a source to image stream once. I don't know how. Yeah, it um, went various ways. Sorry. It went various ways. Okay. Yeah, cool. I've can, always uh, used source to image um just because uh again operations background i don't want to get in the habit of maintaining docker files everywhere so um so i'll just use the source to image here i'm using php framework php version i actually wrote this on six dot i forget what but we'll see if it works for seven yeah um, do it live do it live yeah name php price list so we're gonna go with either so here either you can do a deployment deployment config um so if, if you're going to submit uh, PRs, Jason, I think I'll do a deployment config. <laughs> 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 so that way I, I, I can maybe do some uh, um, some automation around this, maybe live. Uh, create route. So here's here's the check mark. Create the route. So you can actually do it um, from the source to image now instead of doing it afterwards. Uh, so here we are. So we got the amoeba. The amoeba view, as I like to call it which gives us a uh, build, right? So let's go here and so this is straight that PHP. Amoeba view, that, uh, that was the topology and I like Amoeba. Um, <laughs> it's interesting when you listen to how the, uh, the UI team talks about it because there's a kebab menu and what if, uh, there's something hamburgers and I don't remember if they call oh, the hamburger menu? donuts, yeah. the hamburger menu. Yeah. And I was just about to say, and they call the circles donuts. But now that I think about it, I'm the only one who does that because of all the food <laughs> references. So that's not Canon. And perhaps we should kind of keep pushing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here uh, you're going to see kind of a little, there's a, there's a little bit of dirty laundry with, with this, this uh, get. So, um, so I'm, I'm kind of a, a little, Little nervous for Jason to see this, who's an actual real developer, versus just a PHP script kitty. Um, is, is I, I'm not. Such, is there such a thing as a real developer, Jason? Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's it's. it's... I God, there's so so many places I can go, and yeah, exactly. the, the biggest place I want to go is to take a shot on Eric for no good reason. But <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> well, well, I thought you were gonna say at least you didn't use Rails. So I didn't actually use any <laughs> framework. So I just this is just straight PHP. You notice there was no like. If you use like um, like compose or something like that, they, they would have it would have done its um, download of its modules. But um, I'm I'm just doing everything straight PHP, so that's why you didn't. The source image build is a little a little boring. So let's go back to the topology here. Um, so cool. So I have this amoeba. Um, if I open the amoeba, um, right, I have this little um, right Bootstrap ish looking thing on Java. If I if I try to connect to the database, obviously database is not there. I feel this is a, a source to image demo. All of a sudden, it's turned into but. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so I need yeah. to add a database. We got time. Right, obviously, we got time. So, um, so I got now, this. Though, so joking aside though, this is actually valuable because you see what it would kind of sort of take an end user to do. I mean, yeah, some of this we could put away in a single manifest with multiple. Um, I don't even know what you call it. You stick multiple YAML files into a single one, but um, yeah. you know we, we could I, do. This I used to call it a poor man's template. There we go. <laughs> I used to, that's what I used to call it, <laughs> poor man's template. But I mean, I mean, I, I do it all the time. I mean, it's it's uh, or poor man's Helm chart. I don't I don't know what you want to call it. Um, so I need a database, right? So how do I add a database? So let's let's add here. This is where we go to the catalog. This is what I have always done, and just type in uh, MySQL. I wrote this with MySQL. I guess we can we can try MariahDB 
or but is it Mariah or Maria? Maria. Maria. It's, Mar- Mariah it's Maria. Maria have an H in it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. At least I'm not. I've heard people call it Mariah, and I was like, "Am I? Am I the crazy one?" All right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Mariah is a famous singer. True, but it would have an H in it. But it would right? have an H. So. So stand sheet template. Does this have storage? Does, does this? I, I assume it does have storage, some sort of storage. I guess we'll see. Do, yeah. Something. It has, I mean, I can't in provision without nothing, right? Um, I'll just I'll just go down the line and call it priceless. <laughs> Eric, I like that one. It's only Mariah DB at Christmas time. I think that was a lot. Of- <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. When a wild <laughs> Michael Kublé <laughs> emerges after Thanksgiving yeah, yeah, and it, it becomes Mariah DV. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's see. Let's see here if this, if it's uh, environment. Let's go events. Successfully. Uh, volume successfully attached. So I guess we do have volumes. Yeah, you send it entirely too surprised there. We got to be like, no, we knew this was going to work. Well, so so we're doing I, this live. It's because it's a Twitch stream, which is why it totally flies. But like, yeah, it yeah. cracks me up in in like more formal demos when they actually right, sound see. surprised or, or when I accidentally slip my own voice in a demo. I'm like, I should have made it sound like I knew this was going to work. Yeah, I knew this. I, I, I should have made it sound like, of course, it's going to work. Mm-hmm. That's why you do the long ums and uh, see, just like that. And <laughs> just like. Magic, it's up. <laughs> How long can you make that pause last without yeah. being weird? Do I? Can I add this to the to the amoeba? Should I? I don't. I mean, I don't think it's going to do anything. It, it kind of oh. depends on how you've written that PHP. Okay. It it probably won't do anything. All right. Um. Okay. So database is up and running. Cool. So. Um, the way you get this app running, you can either inject environment variables, as I do in my um, in my purse list here. Um, you can either inject them directly, or what I've done is um, you can actually set a config map, right? Um, like in my code but here. So, depending on what you named it, you could just attach a secret from that MySQL created to it. Yeah, yeah, that that as well. You can do all kinds of things. Usually I just give it That's a That's what vote. everyone is going to see me do in the Odo Twitch uh, stream when we actually Odo. schedule that one. Am I the only one that says Ood, uh, Odo? Well, you know what's funny? When uh, we were talking about pronouncing yes. things earlier, uh, that's another one that it, it sucks either way. There's really no good way. So. You're like the third. Well, I think everyone in the evangelist team says it that way because you're like the third person that I've heard say, say it that way. Yeah. The problem <laughs> well, Langdon, is I'm doing Lang- Langdon on up. our team says it that way. Does he? I, I want to oh. do a talk coming up called Oh Do or Oh Do Not, There Is No Try. There is. I don't say yes. it correctly. So written, that's fine. It just doesn't really translate out loud. Or so, ODO. You could just spell the letters ODO, out. yeah. ODO. Cool. Um, so I need to I need, I need to connect to this database. So that's, how do we do that? Um, you can tell I spend a ton of time on this. Um, compute? No. Monitoring? No. Someone help me out here. What are you trying uh, to do anyway? Oh, uh, config yeah. map. I'm sorry. Config map. So, Workloads. Yeah. Workloads. Workloads. Yeah. Sweet. Config map. All right. So let's create a config map uh, on R2D2. Um, I like how it gives it gives you a uh, um, it gives you just enough rope to hang yourself with. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have to like I don't have to uh, um, uh, know how to formulate this. They just give me an example here that I that I that I just use here. Um, and that's something else to go into um, more OpenShift 4, um, trivia is not the right word, but new features. This has a decent amount of autocomplete on it, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, it I'm does. not seeing it uh, pop up, but I know I've definitely seen it happen before. I guess for data, it's not really going to have anything. But Yeah, so let's go here. And this is just a, if anyone knows how I code my PHP applications, it would. Um, Okay, make sure that you'll be able to hack it easily. I was about to say, speaking of hacking, so we're, we're injecting direct code into awesome. Awesome, that's right. Hey, hey, hey. you know, there's there's no there's no rules here. There's not. <laughs> I mean, I there's a few, go back but to, there's, there's not. No bad we, code, we can but... acknowledge that this is a bad practice. Yes, correct, yes. <laughs> and that's honest. I mean, we all do presentations and stuff, and I'm sure every single one of us has been on stage showing something and be like, look, no one would do this. No, yeah, yeah, please don't do it this way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it this way. I'm just doing this for the sake of time. Yeah. Last time I did an operator's demo, I uh, and if I had to do it today, I had like the username and, and password like hard-coded in. I'm like, 
don't do that. But for simplicity, we're going to do that right now. Yeah. Anyone totally remember what I totally called my that. service? No one remembered what I called that. I, I don't remember what I called my service. So let's look it up here. You called you called the namespace R2D2. I don't okay. remember the service. Uh, let me see here. Where's networking, uh, networking services? I called the service. Uh, the service is called Mariah DB. Okay. Maria. Maria. Maria BB. Sorry. Sorry. It's not <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's change the, the let's change this here. So I have to change this for it to say. There we go. In case any of you are wondering, uh, the host string, how you connect to a database, um, I'm just using the service name. Um, but I just that's always the service name, namespace name, dot SVC. So I don't even think the namespace and the SVC are required. Not that I'm saying take them out and chance it, but I'm 99% I mean, we, positive I've just used the service name. You, you could just use the service name, yeah. So um, let's just do it that. Let's do it live. Yeah. All right. So it's then, because you're driving. So if it looks bad, then I just kind of sit back. Yeah, exactly. Like, you shouldn't me. have listened to me. <laughs> you say it's your fault for listening to me. Um, and ultimately, it was Eric. He was texting me and said to try that if it breaks. Yeah. So here, now how do I? Oh, wait. I have to go back to administrator view uh, to attach it. Um, let's go to deployment, uh, which would be deployment configs, price list. Oh, my phone's going off. Um, uh, here. Uh, there's a way to do this that is not in the command line. What are you doing? Attaching the config map? Yeah, I think I, last time I had to do this in the command line. Hold on. Uh, no, no, right there. Add all from config map or secret. Middle of the page. Oh, no, wait. No, down at the bottom one. You had it right the first time. This one down, down here, right? Going down, down. Yeah. Let me remove this here. So add all from config map or secret, right? Yeah. I think so, it's just gonna end new row, yeah. Yeah. So I, I so I should just be able to config prefix. Um that's the is that the do I do do I do it like that? That's no. a right? good question, actually. That's not a prefix, is it? Yeah, no, I don't think you need one. No, it says optional. Um well I'm trying to mount it as a file. I remember I had trouble doing this. Oh, last time. okay. So a config. So I'm gonna take this off screen because what I'm gonna do is I think I have to drop drop down to the. Um, uh, I see a chance that if anyone wants to type in that token, let them. They deserve to fart around on the uh, server. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If they got it. If, if they have if they have a photographic memory, right? If, if if they got it that fast, I can shut it down that fast. <laughs> <You understand>? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do um, OC project R two D two. Oops. Okay, cool. And then I could do OC get C. So I already uh, volume. I already don't know how to do this. Uh, so it's set volume. Deployment config. Give refresh thing, because we got to do this all in Ansible in a second. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, okay, set volume, add name v1. No, I want a source should be uh, removed. So, I think it's like, okay, so it's um, OC set uh, volume on my deployment config, uh, what do I call this? I think it's PHP price list. Okay, PHP price list. Uh, add, right, because we want to add it. So let's do that. Type is of config map, oops. You need the mount point, right? Yeah, uh, I want to. I think I want to mount it on slash data. Um, let's see here. We're doing this live. Where are the configs? Yes, <laughs> slash data. So I'm expecting. Oops, slash data. Where would I go? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. So PVC. Okay. So. Uh, And do I have to do, a, is it claim name or config map name? Config 
You're a bit on your own here. I usually choose invariant variables. Yeah, name. Maybe, maybe we should have just done that. Config map name. <laughs> um, but this is price list config. Uh, price list config. And then I uh, want to do it on slash data. That should work. <laughs> Give it a shot. I'm doing this live, so. All um, right. Oh, cool. OK. All right, so then it took it. So now it's going back here to the developer view. It took it. It's restarting. And it is restarting. I should do this rolling, rolling deployment thingy, terminating. Cool. So then now if I go into my terminal and I do uh, cat uh, data uh, db.php, it's not there. Nice. What's in slash data? Yeah. Oh. So if you don't if you don't see the typo, I won't tell you. <laughs> oh, we all saw it. I yeah. saw. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to change this here. So this is why. Um, it's, there we go. Yep. Although to be fair, you did set with this screen up here for a while, and we didn't notice it. We didn't notice yeah, no, it no, all. No, no. <laughs> we 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 were sticking you for it too. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. Didn't notice. yeah. <laughs> So uh, the only way to do this is OC delete pods. Um, let's just do that. I probably shouldn't have done the database one. Oh, well. Eh. You got to have state somewhere, right? Like, and all the stateless stuff. State yeah. has to live somewhere, so. Well, luckily, I didn't write anything, so. Um, and then we have the volume, so it's not like it matters, matters. Right, okay. yeah. No. Okay. Like, you didn't, so you didn't lose this... a bunch of production data. That's good. <laughs> there it is. All right, so there's my config. Yay. All awesome. right. Um, oops. So this is kind of where I, I air my dirty laundry a little bit. Um, you need to um, access the night. OK, well, this is fun. Um, OK, it shouldn't have done that. Access denied. So that means is that I probably have the settings wrong. So let's go back to. Um, Did we? I forget mm -hmm. at this point when you deployed Maria, you actually created a price list user, right? User, yeah, yeah. So let's go to the environment. Okay, how do I how do I see it? There used to be the eyeball. There is no eyeballs. Uh, I could drop to the command line and, and, and view it, right? So I can yeah. OC get uh, OC in I think. No. Um, OC get uh, get all. Let's see what I want here. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then it's a deployment config. Okay, so OC get DC or Maria DP slash OYAML. And it should be in one of these. Um, so it's in a secret. OK, let's see, get secrets. And I bet you it's encoded. Yeah, it's what, base 64? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's echo base 64. Database name is price list. Nope. Type of parse list again. Parse list. Ah, uh, arg. And I bet you anything. I, I did that with a. <laughs> I did that with. Oh yeah, because look, <laughs> the, exact, the whole the, thing. The, <laughs> <laughs> and now we know why it all breaks. <laughs> That's why it didn't work. Okay, cool. So let's 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 roll with the typo. Um, yeah, run with it. Let's go to where's workloads. There it is. Uh, deployment uh, config maps. And then um, YAML. Purse list. Let's just do <laughs> Let's do it that way. OK. This is particularly <laughs> funny since I called you out on it in the, the readme, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I In, in my head, I, I, um, I probably did it as a, uh, um, as a joke. And then now I'm paying the price for it. Or at least that's what's on, what I'm telling myself. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go back. 
or that'll probably die. Cool. All right. Let's refresh this. All right. No records found. So that's what you want to see, right? Um, and then some of my dirty laundry create database.php. It needs to create the actual tables and stuff. There it is. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, man. We can have Ansible call into that and automatically yep. do that. And automatically do that. That's exactly right. So let's create a record. Um, so price is supposed to be like um, this. Let's see, uh, what do we do this here? What are we selling here, guys? Um, bananas. Bananas. All right. B A N A. And AS. Oh, gosh. Okay. Should, I put, should I pick an easier word to spell? Yeah. yeah. I mean, at this point, we're kind of running out of words. <laughs> Can you spell Descript orange? <laughs> <laughs> Description. Tasty fruit. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. No, so, so there, we're, we're getting some on chat here. Lightsabers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to Stick name it X-Wing or A-T-A-T -A -T yeah, or A-Wing or something like that. So we're doing lightsabers. Got um, we're selling lightsabers. Gently used. Okay, cool. Gently used lightsaber. <laughs> Gently used lightsaber. May or may not have bodies on it. Yeah, it may or may not <laughs> have dried blood on. All right. So it's BB8's my favorite. So um, and I guess is electronics. Oh, wait, Motors actually. I guess electronics. Oh, there we go. If I angle it up, you can see my BB8 Lego up there. Oh yeah, BB8. Nice. Yeah, but the problem is you only see like my forehead if I have it up like that. Now I gotta fix all this. All right, cool. So now, um, so now we have. All right, so this is the app, right? Simple, <laughs> simple app. It took us a while to get it deployed, but it's <laughs> barring any typos, we got it deployed. Two right? Red Hat experts deploy a single two-container application <laughs> yeah. in forty-five minutes. Thank exactly. you for attending our Twitch chat today. Yeah, thank you for Twitch. <laughs> Tune in next week as we attempt to exit VI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, fun story. I've never, I, I don't know how to exit, exit Emacs. So <laughs> control, <laughs> I X, control C naturally. Yeah. Exactly. So being okay. a VI guy. Cool. All right. Now that we have that context set. Um, <laughs> oh my God. First and <laughs> last session on Twitch. All right. Yeah. This is why we have fun with this. This is good. Actually, honestly, all kidding aside, it was kind of interesting to see this play out because there's obviously multiple ways of doing it in terms of the config map or um, attaching the secret directly. Um, we got to see messing with the UI. We got to see messing with the command line. And more importantly, he had to individually do each of those pieces. I'm watching you fight with this arrow right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> So where does the operator come into this? I think we will probably take a break actually given um, the, it's, yeah, it's almost four o'clock. Um, so it's probably a good quick five minute break time, but uh, to kind of um, put things in contact and I'm watching this Emacs chat go on and, and yeah, yes, I if know. you want to save it. <laughs> I, I, always, you, I always start, I'm the first one to start a VI Emacs war because I'm like a VI guy. Like hardcore VI guy. I mean, it wouldn't be a good solid Twitch stream if we didn't have some kind if of. If you didn't have some war. sort of, we've, we've already had some war, right? yeah. language <laughs> arguments. We've had. Um, we're now getting into the v the editor's arguments. Yeah. Um, Eric, you, I'm not going to give you shit for like a half an hour because you just made a contra code reference, and that makes me very happy. Yes. So what are we talking about? <laughs> Operators. So uh, Operators. Right. all of this was done using these very fine level Legos uh, included within OpenShift. So what operators are going to give us, we talked about the custom resource definitions earlier. We're going to be able to define a resource that talks in terms of just a price list. And instead of us having to, us being the end user. So if we threw Chris short at this and said, hey, go deploy this thing once we're done. All he's going to have to do is type in, uh, try to create a resource named Priceless, and it's going to hide away a fair amount of this stuff. Um, I think it's a good time for a break. Uh, I could use a quick five minutes to walk around, and we can let chat continue on uh, how they plan on going down the editor route here. Um, should we do that? You guys want to go walk around for like five minutes before we actually start the operator stuff? Sure. I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if you need a break, let's take a break. And uh, I'll maintain the chat and you know let everybody know we'll be right back. Okay, like five minutes or so, everyone.
All right. Now we should be back. Or not. Yeah. I don't. There we go. All right. A little technical yeah. difficulty. Yes. <laughs> Everything moved around the second I added that BRB thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, the break was nice because I actually got an Amazon delivery. So, oh. that was, so it was perfectly timed. So, that's nice. Um, well, there you go. Cool, cool. Um, all right. So welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you for joint, coming back after the break with us. Uh, we're going to get back started into what, Christian? So actually, Jason asked, just asked me if I have the SDK installed. I actually do have the SDK installed. Um, I don't know if it's the proper version. I have 16 dirty. I don't, I don't know if that's the latest. I'm on, I'm on 17. Okay. Uh, I don't know what dirty means. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know how much. <laughs> it says 16 dirty. So I'm not sure. Um, very curious where you might've gotten that from. While yeah. you download that, let me, let me kind of vamp a little bit on the operator. Yeah. Side. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll, I'll so, go, um, to the GitHub page and just download the binary. Uh, earlier we talked about how the whole operator framework, uh, we're donating this to CNCF. Um, now operator framework, we use that term and you can see it in the URL here, the GitHub org, refers to three projects. Uh, operator metering, which is focused around um, usage and resource allocation for operators. Uh, operator lifecycle manager, with, I, excuse me, li operator lifecycle manager or OLM for short, which I don't think we're going to spend a ton of time with today. And in fact, if that's not on the list of possible Twitch topics, we can add it. Um, that uh, is basically yum for operators. And that's kind of trivializing it a bit, but it handles dependency management, lifecycle management in terms of installing and upgrading operators and uh, making subscriptions to different channels that support them and so on. What we're going to spend the rest of today on, um, barring any other tangents, oh. which we know we're going to have, um, we're going to. Um, I what, <laughs> but by the way, I just downloaded the <laughs> the wrong <laughs> the, the wrong architecture, right? So uh, apparently, I think, <laughs> so I think I'm on so arm. Today, I think I'm on arm. <laughs> I know, Tomorrow, so, by the way, actually, I do have some Raspberry Pis laying around here. So uh, no, I do too. So I told you. So. I totally so do I actually. Um, yeah. That'd be that'd be just a fun like off topic. Get Brian Tannis on here and just right. talk about the weird kind of stuff everyone is going. Like Chris said, he has a nuke. I know Brian got me set up where uh, my Raspberry Pi is running a pie hole right now, um, mm -hmm. which has been pretty awesome. Yeah, I've run that for a while and decided uh, it, to not it's run amazing. It for a yeah, while, it's kind of like you know, yeah, it's 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 great if you're capable of making everybody in the house happy, but. You know, when my wife's on her Facebook thing. app and like it suddenly features stop working, like certain features in the Facebook app were like messing with my wife's Facebook, like Piehole was messing with my wife's, wife's Facebook app experience. Not the website, just the app. So I don't That's know what was funny, going on there. No, Brian said the same thing. He's got it set up where you can just get to a very easy API interaction to turn things off and enable certain things. I've yet to see an issue. And maybe that's because if my kids complain something's not working, I'm like, you probably shouldn't see it anyway if the pie hole caught it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> digital babysitter. Uh, so wait yeah. in there. No, um, I, I definitely, um, I, I just switched, I got Max, uh, I switched around a bunch of PCs here at home and Max, my son now has his own, but I switched his DNS over to one of those that filters the, the adult content. So Cloudflare has one. I just switched it over to oh, that. Oh, nice. And I'm hoping that, uh, I mean, we've been using the one for malware since they released it a few weeks ago. And, uh, I'm hoping the abuse one does just as good. Uh, but there's also a thousand and one other ways to protect your kids' internet usage in the house. But most yeah. of them rely on DNS. So, yeah. As, yeah, as and many of you know, I, I really love DNS. So. Uh, Christian <laughs> is the knower of DNS. He's not <laughs> I, really loves DNS. He knows DNS. Oh, I see Brian. Oh, okay, nice. I know. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting stuff on the chat it. about it. That's why That's why <laughs> he's the best. So, um, I, I, <laughs> I no longer have the dirty version, so that's good. Yay! Yeah, We're where did version. dirty come from? Do did, did we figure that out? Um, I actually, I actually compiled um the operator oh, okay. SDK a, a while back, go. so from, All right. from source. So now we know. Um, as one can do with open source software. So the right. SDK, the third piece of the operator framework. Um, to be very clear, this is not the only way to write an operator. Uh, there's a Python library called KOPF uh, that is for writing Python-based uh, operators. So, but. 
it, it, this isn't the only thing. Don't let me, don't let us talk like, oh, you have to use the SDK. That said, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, if you're going to uh, be sticking with one of the supported runtimes for it, which is to say Helm, Ansible, or Go, um, we've been pushing internally for them to add support for other languages as well. I don't know the roadmap. Uh, just speaking completely personally, I'd be surprised if Java didn't find its way in here soon, given how much of a Java influence we have. Um, but <clears throat> SDK, we're going to spend the rest of the day with is uh, going to generate a lot of the scaffolding for us. And particularly in the case of the Ansible operator, which we've been saying, but that's not really the accurate term. It's going to be an operator that uses Ansible. Ansible. So all of the play, the plumbing for running Ansible, for wiring it in. So um, the custom resource values get mapped to the Ansible playbooks, running those playbooks, setting up the watches in OpenShift to understand, hey, this resource got created. I should tell this operator about it. It. All of that stuff is going to be scaffolded out for us and uh, handled. We're not going to have to write any of that. We're just going to have to provide Ansible to it um, and then go from there. Uh, Christian, I was asking you over the break, and I'm just going to save this from when we get to it, but I'm kind of curious to see how you test this thing because there's two options um, and I'm, I'm curious to see which route you go. But okay, let's, interesting. All right. Let's, yeah, we'll, we'll, get to, we'll, go, we'll do that when we get there. Cool. Yeah, exactly. We'll get there in a second. Um, so yeah, so this is the, the SDK itself uh, available from the releases. If you were watching in the background as Christian was clicking around, um, you can build it yourself if, if you want to be like Christian. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and get dirty. So that's when you get, get dirty. dirty. <laughs> you get dirty. <laughs> this is when you build it yourself. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> let's get started. Filthy, nasty, dirty. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm doing a little, uh, you asked me in the beginning. I don't know if you asked me on, on or off the air. Uh, if I've written an operator before, and yes, I have. Um, so I'm, it's a little cheating because um, I kind of know the steps a little bit. Um, it's been a while since I've done it. And it's the reason I use Ansible is because I come from an op operations background. Um, and it's just it's just the language that's easiest for me, right? Right, right now, the um, I think you mentioned it, that um, right now I think it's just uh, Ansible, Helm, and, and Go, right? Correct. And so, but again, that's just in the SDK. Yes, there is a just Java in the library out there. There is a Python correct, library. Correct. So when this, um, when when the framework came out, it's like, well, my choices are either Go, which I don't know, right, um, and I don't know any any statically typed language. So I'm like, is is the learning curve like how steep is that learning curve? That's why I went Lansable, just because I've I've already been using it. So, um, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get Holy War for a second. I mean, if you don't know a yeah. better language than Go, it's probably not that hard to learn Go. But yeah. if you've worked with any other language, you're going to sit back and look at Go and be like, really, that was your choice? So but the question- More of a personal thing. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the question I always ask myself when creating a, a, an operator, um, and it's, it's a question, it's, it's really, um, it's an easy question, but it, it'll fundamentally shape how, how, how this, um, how this operator will run and how your users will interact with the operator is that are you going to create a um, are you going to create a namespace scoped operator or a globally cluster wide operator right um, and uh, that's the first question I ask even before I type it I type any commands I ask like how how is this operator how are people going to interact with this operator right so um, Jason, do you want to go over what the difference between a namespace scoped versus cluster scoped? Yeah. So by name, everyone probably has an idea of what to expect here. Um, it, it's a fairly safe bet to say it should be namespace scoped unless you have a reason for it not to be. Um, so I'm sorry, I just saw something in chat. Are we starting or ending? This is actually good timing because we are just starting the operator part of it. Um, we spent the first hour kind of messing around um, with the application itself, uh, showing how to deploy it in OpenShift. Um, note, I didn't say showing the right way to deploy it in OpenShift, uh, showing what happens when you put two nice. guys on stream <laughs> and attempt to deploy it on OpenShift when uh, people are watching. Uh, so now we're just digging into the operator pieces itself. OK, uh, so it sh you should probably put it namespace scoped unless you have another reason. That means that yep. you'll deploy the operator into a specific namespace. It will take care of any custom resources deployed within that namespace. So for something obvious like priceless, you probably don't need that cluster wide. Yeah. 
Um, Cluster-wide things are a little bit better when you think of how OpenShift itself runs. And I don't want to get into a tremendous amount of details, but all of OpenShift 4 is pretty much driven to run on operators. So when you scale up your cluster nodes, handling your networking, um, there's a variety of things you do that are all fielded by operators. And those function at the cluster. I mean, they're affecting the cluster itself. So they're going to really function uh, at the cluster level. They should be installed that way. For the most part, things you're writing on your own, I would try to keep it namespace scoped unless you have a reason why you're going to want to throw it across the entire cluster. Yep. There you go. Pontificating from Jason. Nice. I like it. <laughs> I like it. So, um, so we're going to do this. Um, uh, oops. I am on the wrong window. OK. So. Um, Operator SDK, I guess new is the is is a subcommand. Do we yep. do help? Let's do help. Yeah, so um, new is the keyword here. So we're gonna do a new, um, and then we have to name this something, right? Um, we'll call this uh, price. Oh, so okay. Nice. How about? <laughs> 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 um, so, um, and then let's just hit hit the help menu. So what does this give me? Type, you're gonna want type. Yeah. So by default, the, so we mentioned that the SDK has three different technologies it uses, Helm, Ansible, or Go. Uh, the default is gonna be Go. So if we just hit enter at that point, it's going to produce the Go, Go scaffolding for uh, gotcha. an operator that you would manipulate in Go. Here, we're gonna do dash dash type uh, and put Ansible and it's going to stub out an Ansible project, which means the Go, code to run the controller itself and hook into Kubernetes. I mentioned that, but we're not going to edit that at all, but that's that kind of glue piece. And then it's going to generate for us an empty role uh, that we're going to watch uh, Christian edit live. Um, it also has the option of pointing it at an archive and having it pre-populate that role for us, but that's no fun. Um, while he's typing that in, I'm going to talk about API version and the kind name. Um, kind is a little bit easier, um, but that's Basin. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's effectively t the type name. Um, if you think in Kubernetes when you've created a new pod, it's been in the template or the manifest, you've said kind equals pod or deployment kind equals deployment. Um, here we are creating a new custom resource type, uh, which is created. Never mind. We're creating a custom resource type, and the name of it is going to be priceless. That's the easiest way to think about it if you're not familiar with this stuff. Uh, API version is, I got yelled at for saying this before, but I'm going to do it again, uh, <laughs> a combination namespacing and versioning construct. So the priceless.example.com um, is going to help identify priceless itself. And then the v1 alpha one is going to be the version of this particular custom resource. Why um, did you get yelled at for that? I so this. I mean that that actually yeah that sounds like a pretty reasonable explanation for it. Yeah, like that that doesn't sound wrong at all. <laughs> I forget exactly. Maybe it was the phrasing. So this is back when I was writing the book, and I had oh. perhaps oh. leaned too heavily into calling it a namespace and not enf uh, enforcing the version part of it enough. Oh, okay. But yeah. maybe it was just my phrasing, and just I kind of just just dropped it on the page incorrectly, but um, oh. at least one person, if not two reviewers, both were like, yeah, you're a little off there. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys help verify. And now that I've, I've mean, explained it a thousand times, maybe it's a little more clear. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it. you're not wrong. I don't feel like in that explanation. It okay. is a way to assign a you know specific thing. You're creating something out of thin air when you're doing this. So you have to name it something, you have to give it a, you know, a proper version and that's what you're doing here. Right. And then you, yeah, exactly. And then the namespacing stuff, you're avoiding potential conflicts. Mm -hmm. So as a operations background, for me, that's, this is what I have to type when I create my custom resource. Bingo. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. So like, yeah. like this literally becomes part of the, the YAML manifest that you have to write. Right. So, um, cool. Scaffolding done. Look at that. So here it should have created, um, there we go. Created priceless directory. Priceless, that's right. So, oops, not print. Uh, let's do tree, right? Um, and just see what we got here. So we got. Um, 
Let's start at the top. So we got a Docker file because remember yeah. operators are deployed as pods. So in some capacity, bad way of saying it, at some point we're going to build this as an image and run it inside of our cluster. Mm -hmm. um, that deploy directory, those four files in the middle, the operator role, role and service, um, those are going to be used to deploy it. They don't have to be, but the scaffolding stubs out that stuff for us. So that operator.yaml is the deployment for the operator image we're going to build. And we'll actually see in there, it's got this giant replace image where we have to put the image name in of what we build. And then the service account and role, uh, the operator has to do things inside the cluster. So it's going to need a service account to do that. It's going to need permission to do that stuff. So it's going to have to have a, a role. And if we take a look at that, which we can dig into in a second, that role is really permissive because by default, we just generate it with access to just about everything. Um, at some point when you're writing an operator, you want to review that and trim it down to what is necessary. For instance, it talks about secrets and config maps and it has full CRUD access to all of them. Now this is obviously going to end up being namespace scoped, but at the end of the day, being a good citizen that's going to be deployed on a cluster, you'll want to trim that down and customize it kind of as necessary. Uh, the two things in the CRDs directory, so the CRD file itself, the top one is a stub for the cluster, I'm sorry, the custom resource definition. Um, so once we dig into that, you'll see those terms that we just used with the API version and the kind. And then CR is a sample uh, resource. So we it'll actually be how do we create a uh, custom resource of price list. And it's going to stub out variables that don't really exist because it doesn't know because we haven't defined them yet, yeah. but we'll have to go in there and edit that at some point. Cool. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's dig in there. Let's, and then roles is an Ansible role. Uh, yeah. If you're familiar with Ansible, a lot of that structure should look familiar to you. Yes. So the easiest way that I've done this, um, so this is just Ansible. So for, for those, for those who are watching, who are familiar with Ansible, you essentially have the, the breadth of the, the entire module catalog for Ansible. So this is just essentially, it'll just run an Ansible playbook. Um, so if you have existing playbooks, you can import them and you know, hack them. Um, so that way you can um, tie in your custom resource into the variables. Um, what I like to use is, uh, since I cheated, um, what is it, Ansible doc, right? And then uh, I think it's called Kate's module. Yeah, yeah. Kate's module, yes. yeah. So um, what I end up doing, and do you have examples here? Do they? Do they or do they? There we go. Um, what I end up doing is I create um, Kubernetes manifest files, right? So like uh, deployment YAML files, service YAML files. This is really the easiest way to deploy an application um, using um, Ansible and Kubernetes together. Right, so you have a manifest files that you can then um, leverage the Jinja templates and use that in conjunction with um, the, uh, um, the variables that you're able to pass through, right? So someone can create a custom resource, type those variables, those variables will come through and you can then um, post-process these YAML files with those Jinja templates and we'll, we'll, we'll go over how, um, how that, how that how that looks like so um, you have the whole the whole breadth of the whole the whole catalog of any ansible modules but i'm going to cheat and just use the, uh, the kubernetes one just because it just fits naturally right um i wouldn't even call that cheating i mean that's that's going to be your best bet i thought you were going to say like cheating in the sense that you're going to copy them out of here I, and just modify which is actually pretty badass if you legitimately used what equates to man pages as a start yeah 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 exactly yeah. <laughs> really cool <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it really, really, all you really need, I'm just going to highlight it here. Uh, really, all you really need is this, right? You need you know, the template lookup. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, lookup template. Mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs> State equals present, right? So you can do a lot of other fancy stuff with it. Wait for um, um, certain things to roll out before other things roll out. Um, and, and we can we can try those later. But I think you might want to get into that to get yeah. that database load call in there. Yeah, but. yeah. It, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how far we get. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I was surprised how far Eric and I got with the Alexa one. Um, I kept saying, man, we're a lot further than I thought we were going to be. Um, so, 
So that's what I like to do is I like to create a workspace of the cluster I'm working on. Um, so we'll see a new project. Workspace, right? Scratch space, whatever you want to call it. Uh, OC project. Uh, workspace. Um, I'm already on workspace. I always do this just because I've been burned by. Because uh, one day it's not going to switch you over. Exactly. One day it's. I remember very, very early on, right? Kubernetes V1, 1.0, alpha. It um, open, which then OpenShift Dirty. used. Obviously, it, it didn't right. switch you over. So I, I, I got burned a few times. Um, Cool. So then let's, uh, so it's here, roles, right? So this is just an Ansible playbook. So let's do this price list. So here, this should look very familiar if you've ever used Ansible. Um, you got your tasks, your templates, your bars, things like that. This is all uh, normal um, Ansible things, right? So if you're, if you're used to Ansible, this, none of this should surprise you. So. What I like doing is I like to do um, OC uh, create a deployment, and then we'll call this a price list, right? Just because, and then image. Um, since this, I always like to say this. Since this is a cooking show, I already had, already pre-made this image. Um, actually, what did I call it? Let's do this live. Um, Quay.io. Uh, Quay. There it is. And then I need to sign in, obviously. None of you email me. I won't respond. Um. <laughs> so now here's where, here's where things are going to get interesting because we could do this entirely without building the image. And this is what I was asking about earlier. Is that yeah. I wasn't sure if you were going to go that route. I mean, it's probably valuable to do both. Yeah. So I so I actually took so I built this beforehand, and I just took this image that it built and pushed it up to Quay, um, and I just have a version of this application running. So you can say, uh, what can you say? Uh, price. Yeah. So the here image. Uh, price list latest. Uh, and then Chris, you uh, like me that you're watching every time you're at hyped price at this point? Yes. Like I am uh, intently. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm triple watching. checking as well. So I'm like, am I typing that right? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like, these guys didn't say I'm anything. I'm like nodding so my head as he types it. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm, I'm looking back at you guys. I go, are they? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Price list. Confirmation? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I realized I was aggressively watching that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once I do that, this so this this dry run O YAML, it basically just gives me a YAML um, mm -hmm. that you can actually feed into the Kate's module, right? So. Um, so this is cool to see because I don't do this. I I go the opposite approach. I take one I've written in the past and then I modify stuff. Modify, yeah. This is mm -hmm. neat though. This is a this is a very cool way of doing it, especially with the dry run because I totally forgot. So you were going to do that. I, I really forgot that was a thing. And I'm like, oh, right, you create like, it and then you delete it after the fact. What I've been told is that if you want to pass like the CKA and CKAD exams from Linux Foundation, is that like the o, the dry run OEML thing will yeah. bail you out a bajillion times. So you have to get used to using that. Which is which is what I used when I when I took that test. <laughs> right. So that, so, that, so, that, so, so this is why it burned into my head. Um, I always like to do a uh, namespace. Um, means replace me, right? Because it'll actually write that into the YAML. And I and I'll I'll remember to, that um to replace that. Because um as as you see, I've been burned before <laughs> by not providing the namespace. I don't know that you need that. I thought that the the Ansible will fill that in for you. Will it? Will it? I, I don't know. It'll fill in the the well maybe. We can we can look. I have an example of it. I'll pull it up right now while you keep going. Yeah. There has to be. This is, can, can we pull the audience? What does the audience say? Uh, what, is, what does the audience say? Uh, oh no. Okay. Alrighty. So this is what I have in my example of it. Is that? Um, so we're gonna. Yeah. I see what you. It was basically namespace you were getting at. is a variable. Yeah. 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 Yes. But you. Um, okay. I, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, you you're right. Have, you, yeah. You have to have it. Yeah. So this is for me to remember. I need yep. to make this a, a part of the template, right? 
And this goes back to me copy and pasting is that I just take that and I don't look at it again. So that's why I didn't remember it was a specific ginger replacement. So yeah, so here I'm going to put in the templates, right? And we'll just call it this uh, deploy.yaml.j2, right? Because it's going to be a ginger template. Cool. So now we have that. Um, this burned me in the past. You just delete the status. I don't know why it doesn't like it, um, but it doesn't. So <laughs> doesn't like an empty set status. So I if here, it's an empty set or if it just doesn't like a well, no, it well, it's an empty. Like it's an empty array. To, you're trying to create with a status. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what it is. Um, so here, uh, yeah. So here, what I like to do is. Um, this will be all right. So I, we, we need we need to know why I'm going to do it this way. And uh, the way to the way to do that is to go back up a little bit, and then that would be in the build. No, that would be where is the um, let's just do tree. The actual operator. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I can't tell you how Sorry. often I use tree when uh, building an operator of any type. So like tree, this tree is my friend. Yeah, tree. I was like tree because yeah, you have like so many directories. Like, where is that? Mm -hmm. Short of writing, short of writing a, a fine a, a fine script. Um, right. So here, uh, this is the deployment for the actual operator that it's going to build, right? So this is the actual operator deployment. Um, and then this is what you're going to use to deploy the operator once it gets built. A few things that um, um, wait, Eric Jacobs is on, right? What is what is that trick you showed me, Eric? The, Eric the, Jacobs, it, I think, had to leave. Ah, Eric Jacobs has left the building. Um, <laughs> well, because I, I do control. So for you, I do control V and then to like highlight. But I think there's like a better way to do. Uh, Vim key bindings and I. Nah. No, I mean visual block is what you're thinking. Oh, of. okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, Shift V, I think. Yeah, it's just V, isn't it, for visual? There we go. Uh, yeah, it, it is just V. You're right. Why am I doing well, shift visual shift? and then visual line, which is a different thing. But mm. uh, okay, okay, cool. Um, where is that? Okay, so it's here in this little uh, section. Of course, now that everyone's watching me, my VI skills are failing me. Um, Told you we were going to get to a point where we had to exit. Yeah, yeah, we had to exit. <laughs> that's right. Here we um, are. <laughs> So this operator gives uh, um, mixed use of the downward API. So basically, it it'll you're able to and and that that extends to your your what, what you're doing in your logic in your operator, right? So you can call things like metadata dot namespace, and it'll just fill in whatever namespace you happen to be on, um, or metadata name, right? The name of of of, of who you are, right? Uh, in this uh -huh. case, purse list. Um, the so that'll it'll it'll get filled in and you can um you can use that i'm trying to avoid using leverage you can use that because <laughs> we, we use it so so often at work it's just sometimes <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes i just get tired of just saying you can leverage that um you can use that you um in the actual operator um that you're building itself so going back to uh roles uh templates so then when I say namespace, I can actually do metadata dot namespace. And whatever namespace, oops. Thank you. I happen, I happen to be in, <laughs> I happen to be in, um, it'll drop it there in place. So I, I can use some of those, uh, some of those niceties. Um, and I can, I can basically change this to, um, to whatever I want. I can do it here. I think I could do a dash. Um, you know, price list. Back right? end, yeah. <clears throat> whatever, like whatever this I is, right? Front yeah. end's more accurate here, but yeah, front end, yeah. Front, front end. There we go. And then no, no, you, wait, you screwed that up. With the namespace, we don't want to append anything to it. Is the name? You're correct at that. So here, um, 
this is going to be the name of the deployment itself. Priceless is fine just leaving it. I mean, that's what you did at the command line anyway. Yeah, as long yeah. as you spelled it right, it should be the fine. Point still, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the point still well, stands that the, the, yeah. you can do the templates with that kind of uh, dropping it directly in. Okay. And then you and then some of these things that are, and these are the things that get passed through into the CR, right? So I can even do things like um, make the replicas, um, right? I can do like instances. Sure. Right? And then we can so have like, that as a possible option. Into it has a, yeah, the, exa exactly. Um, and now here's what we get to, I mean, at the end of the day, when you have um, Ansible, this could also be defaulted in the defaults and there's all sorts of goofy things you can end up doing there to get super creative about it. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly. So um, cool. So I got this, I, I put int here because again, I've been burned in the past where for whatever reason, Ansible read <laughs> or and whatever the operator converts it into a string. String then, every time, man. And then and it'll drop it in and it's like, wow, what did I do wrong? And it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna whatever, even if it's an int, I'm gonna change it into an int. Mutation is what they call this, right? Um forced cool. safety. Yeah. And then here, yeah, exactly. Um and then here uh you can change we won't change this. We can change this. We can do this. We probably want to. So the issue with not changing this, it means we can never deploy more than one price list in a single namespace using that operator yep. because yep. it's going to call it priceless by default. So, so I can do like- Presumably, uh, the, there's probably a meta, I'd say metadata.name, I think. Yeah, because um, that will be, metadata.name is going to be the name of the custom resource itself. So when we go and we create a resource and its API version is example.com, and the kind is priceless, we're going to pass it a name. That's going to be the name of the price list resource. We're going to then take that and put it in both the label and the name, which you've bounced over twice now. Did I bounce it all uh, right here? Namespace name. Oh, okay. There yeah. we go. All right. So we'll do, yeah, you're right. Um, because if we then, if we, what's going to happen is this, the operator is going to create this deployment. And if you created this deployment and it named it priceless, that's fine until we try to make a second custom resource of type or of kind of price list, in which case it's gonna kind of bump into itself. Trying to make sure, okay. All right, cool. Metadata name, metadata name, metadata namespace, instances, anything else we wanna template here? Fine for now. Let's just get this working, good. we can always tweak it. Yeah, you got enough templates. Cool, cool. So that's uh, that's this guy here. Uh, the next thing is um, actually we need to um, not dry run this. We need to actually run this, and I'll tell you why in a second. This is a Kubernetes thing. Um, so if you want to do uh, now, it's a service, right? So we need to do an OC uh, expose. So the OC get deployment. What's wrong with this cluster? There we go. I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, when the first time the PDS cluster has disappeared in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Did they run the cleanup script? All right. So uh -huh. we want to do, uh, do OC expose, right? So what does OC expose? Um, you can actually take, uh, you can expose a service, right? So when you expose a service, uh, it'll create a route or an ingress point uh, on OpenShift. You can also expose things like deployments. So what, what does what does a, exploding a deployment does? It actually creates a service for you. Um, so you can see that by doing OC expose uh, deployments of price list. Yes. Yes. OK. Price list. Um, and then you need to give things like uh, port, right? Port number it's going to listen on. Uh, and I want it to listen on 8080. Uh, target port, which is the port in the container that it's listening on, which is 8080, not 8 dash 8, 8 dash. Uh, dry run dash OEML. And this, there we go, should create a service for you. So now we got um, this little handy dandy YAML generator. Uh, and this will go to roles, prices, templates, uh, service. Right, yaml.jinja. All right, so let's edit this guy here. 
service. Um, so I guess it's the same thing, right, Jason? You, you need to just do... Um, Apps definitely got to be the same. You know, yeah. I mean, the service really, it's likely going to be the same thing too. Is it meta name or meta? Nope, meta name. Meta, meta. Jesus Christ. Data? I completely just brain fired on this. Yeah, I did too. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's look at the operator. The operator, it says metadata name. Yeah, okay. That's what we used. Metadata.name. And then metadata. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, now, now you got me second guessing myself here. Metadata, metadata, metadata. Okay, cool. So metadata name. And then. Ending quote. Ah, uh, good catch. And then this is the same thing too, right? I just picture you right now, think back to about an hour and a half ago when you're like, Jay, do you want to drive? And I'm like, no, you can drive the demo. It's fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, I can sit here and be obnoxious about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, dumbass, you missed another quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, at least, you, you know what? You know, because, uh, because you don't want to drive, it, it lets you be a backseat driver. And I think, I think that's even more entertaining. Exactly. It's for who though? Uh, I mean, it's entertaining status, for me to watch Jason backseat drive you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just makes me uh, when I become a backseat driver, it makes me more conscious. Backseat right. driver. <laughs> now, don't forget to delete the status at the bottom though. Status. Do we need the status? No, because this is a creation. Status load bounce. Okay, screw it. Do a live. Cool. All right. And then my SQL. Um, yeah. And then SQL. the config map and all that stuff to wire it up. Now I'm curious how, where, how you're going to play this. Cause I'm, like I said, I'm making you drive. Are you going to yeah. test this part by itself? Or are you going to go everything and just Jesus take the wheel type of type of approach? Yeah. I could do. So ideally it depends what, it depends what we're doing. Right. So I, Ideally, you should be able to just just dump it all, right? And Kubernetes should just fix it for you, right? Like the database should eventually come up, and your front end should eventually come up, and it should all eventually uh, sync. But um, yeah. like like you said, in you shouldn't do this in production. You should test everything <laughs> before it comes up. We can do the hacky version. Just put a bunch of sleeps in it. I'm game for what <laughs> for whatever. Um, Honestly, I think we could just, we don't need the sleeps because you have, uh, unless we decide to deal with your database creation step. So from a development standpoint, the, the cloud native, no, a cloud native approach to this would be your PHP script has um, a, on startup, it's going to try to create the database. And then you'll have a loop in there for X amount of times if it can't find the database. And that's how you resolve some of this timing issue where you throw it all out there and it eventually lines up. Um, yeah, so, so I think I think we what, what, what we can do is um, we can just leverage Ansible, right? There's an Ansible module probably for uh, MariaDB to check, right? So there, there's a... There's a there, like a blocking so, task? Yeah, there's like a block and it's, it'll just keep checking oh, and it won't go until the next part is over. Um, so we can do it We can do it that way. So let's, um, I'm just looking, I'm just reading in chat to see if. I'm looking for a role right now. Yeah, probes, we can do. Um, there is a way I've seen us do it in our workshops where you throw everything at it at the same time and you, um, no, never mind. I'm thinking about something. It's apples and oranges. Never mind. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, but, but where I was going to go with this though is, do we want to just test the service and deployment now? I mean, we know we'll get the PHP page itself up, even if it doesn't connect to the database. Do we want to mm -hmm. debug any of this and show what this inner flow, inner loop looks like of iterative development rather than just we solve the entire problem, deploy the operator, oh, okay. and go? I see what you're saying. Also, do we need to create a route or am I missing something? Created a service, but not a route yet. Oh, we do need to create a route. You're right about that. So let's do that. Well, how would you do that? Same way as I've been doing everything else. Let's see. Exposed the same service. Um, I'll use a shorthand since I used a long hand last time. And then service. So speaking of shorthand, Brian and I, I don't know if he's still on the chat or not, but 
the first one we discovered that um, PO is an abbreviation for pod. And yeah. I still can't get over how absurd it is that we abbreviate one pod. character away. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah one character we, away. Yeah. We, Everything we, on we, our other stream. We abbreviate pod, pod, but we still can't pronounce cube cuddle. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, price list. And then. Um, 8080. Uh, Actually, it's only one port. It's probably going to be fine. Yeah. OC get SVC. Oh, I didn't create it. Um, so this is why I have to create it because it just. You can't dry run a dry run. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You can't dry run a dry run. Okay. So OC expose uh, service price list. Uh, dry run. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, you're right. So if I had multiple target ports, I would have to specify a target port. Um, cool. So here, so I guess I can do this and just write it to um, roles, templates, uh, route. All right, so what do we need to change here? Uh, same thing. Medita.name. Closing quote. And then I can actually, I can actually just do this. And then everything else, uh, status ingress null, name, if I just take this guy, I'm going anti VI here. And I was impressed with your, your little copy and paste juggle. It's, it's funny because like, well, when I can you just do see this, yeah. that kind of stuff, it's always looks super impressive. When all yeah. of a sudden you just <laughs> see it fly around the screen like that and stuff appear. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're still fuzzy on what, what's going to happen with the status, but let's just delete it to be safe and remove one. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't know. Um, wait yeah, and all. Especially in the chat on it too. And I just feel like it's, it's one more variable to kind of screw yeah. over. <laughs> one yeah. more thing to whack. And then, so some of the, some of the, some of the things I actually forgot to do in some of this, which is actually um, the thing I, I thought about it is um, I have namespace here. But I, I don't think I put it on the other ones, right? So yeah, you're probably right. Uh, oh, 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 is it here or is it indented? Indented. It's part of metadata. It is part of metadata. Okay. Cool. Namespace metadata. It's all looks. We all have a minor degree in YAML programming at this point. That's right. <laughs> I minored in YAML. <laughs> I made I, my major was XML, but I managed in. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, in chat, gotta... gist is what I was thinking too. Instead of pastebin these days. Yeah, no, pastebin's kind of been. But I know I could say I mean it, at a previous job it's a different story. At Red Hat, you, you kind of you yeah know, you get used to the fact that you can do. I've been here fourteen years now. I would be so spectacularly screwed if I went to another job where I couldn't just send stuff wherever I want. Yeah, wherever you want. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah, exactly. post it on GIST. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have gotten so used to this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. So now we have, so we have, where is, oh wait, it's tree for um, roles price list. So we got deployment, route, and a service. Um, now, do we need to, I'm, I'm super, super rusty with Ansible here. So do we need to put a default in for name and namespace and then just, we're going to know it's going to get overridden or default uh, in terms of the variables you mean? The variable. So that default slash main.yaml for it to be a quote unquote valid Ansible role, which I'm not even sure is a concept as I say that out loud. <laughs> Does it have to be self-sufficient in the sense that it will internally you should, be... You I mean, you should define defaults, but if you know it, like something's going to be generated automatically for you, it is just a ways to my opinion. Okay. So, okay. 
I mean, I'm I'm certified in Ansible. I feel like I can say that. You're that's right. Clearly more. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I left that one up to you guys as I stumbled yeah, through right. a question that I didn't know made sense. One one thing one thing that um would be good to do actually is so if if I look at my my roles and my templates for the deployment, I do have replicas equals instances. I'm assuming we're going to pass that in, but we should probably default to something. Yeah, you should default to like three or something. Right. So that. Yep. So then. Yeah. So then, if you're if you're asking how to do that, right, it's just um, an Ansible in the in the in the vars, right? The default vars. Um. You need to do that or three, right? This is three. Just. I mean, sure. if you got a cluster there, for you might as well. Use Better it. use a cluster. We could pretend it actually did it. Yeah. So you got so, three. Uh, 30 seconds explaining me the difference between VARs and defaults. Well, okay. So VARs are, <clears throat> you can define anything. Defaults are what is used if a VAR is not defined. So let's say you're running through uh, Ansible Play and you have, uh, you call some variable name, but there's no actual like, thing behind it the default is like the the, the fail safe there right that plugs in something for you so that it can just keep going um, most people use it because they know that they need an exact number of something or they know that by default you know you have to have uh, this thing in place and you can overwrite it if necessary based off what environment you're going to kind of thing right so a lot of people build a playbook to only work in dev and then have somebody overwrite it if it's going to prod kind of thing, if that makes sense. Gotcha. So, so actually, so here, so I, I just catted both these files, right? So whether I have instances three in my vars main or in my defaults main functionally is the same, right? If I don't, if no one defines it, well, actually functionally, it'll give me three instances. Mm. Um, but if no one is, but if it's in, so functionally, for if it this, is in a sub, if it is in a group far or a host far, it will be overridden. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Right. So best practice, should I move this to the defaults main? Mm, it's up yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't <laughs> overcomplicate it. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Well, functionally, it'll just get me, get me where I'm going for, for this particular right. purposes. But it, it is a good distinction though that you explained that. Cool. I mean, for so, this for this purpose, yeah. don't worry about it. But don't worry if about you it. have a lot of if you have a lot of defaults set, definitely yeah. use the defaults. Like, actually yeah. take advantage of that convention. Gotcha. Cool. So, do we do we want to test this? Do we want to uh, boil the ocean? Try to do boil the database, it. or <laughs> I was going to say test it. So you be the deciding vote here. Hell, you're the one typing. So if you yeah, want yeah. to sit there, and, and, it's and your try disaster. To debug, yeah. You know, so it does, two deployments it, and multiple. Does the chat have a have a have an opinion here? Do we do we chat? Test it? Do we... Let's see. The chat's got to catch up to us first. Remember, so that's right. That's right. So we'll uh, give it a second. Have people. If, if the chat wants to chime in and say do a live or yeah. test it, we'll know here in a minute. Test it. No default to. Uh, let's say. Nah. Jafar says default to one. Jafar, Jafar says, says let's test it. Jafar says let's test it. Okay, okay. so let's Sorry. trust Jafar. Jafar's never let me wrong. Jafar has never let me wrong. Okay. He has yet to lead me astray. I like how you're saying this, like he's suggesting something wild. He suggests yeah. let's test it. <laughs> <laughs> like you to test it. And you're like, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's speaking some weird shit right now, but let's see what happens. So I think you brought this up before, uh, Jason. I'll 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 tell you what I what I do. And you're gonna probably say this, this is crazy, but again, remember op operations background, so this is just what I do. Um, what I actually build it, push it, and like just run it on a cluster. So I know there's a way in the operator framework, the actual operator SDK, to actually run locally to actually test it locally before even like building it and and, and pushing it to um, to a cluster. Right? Yes. Is that true? Yeah. So yeah, I, let's try do, that. Let, let me yeah, see if I can, do, yeah, if I can talk yeah. you through it. Now, it, it might, I'm assuming you have everything you would need installed locally, but we'll find out real quick. We'll find out. Um, 
So the first thing you're going to want to do is copy watches.yaml into uh -huh. something called local.yaml. And cool. before you edit local, capture what PWD is. I could have just said current directory. I don't know why I said it that way. Okay. So you're going to want to, because we're going to put that into local. So copy that. Cool. Copy buffer. Perfect. All right. So edit local. Uh, that bottom row roll, um, mm -hmm. add, uh, shit. Okay. Your directory slash roles. Slash <laughs> slash <laughs> that you typed correctly. I'm going to point out. Yeah. No typo <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I think it was roles and then slash price list. So before, um, well, you have price list there. You only need. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 Um, so and this, so it's actually, it's actually, it's actually, um, oops, like this, right? Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so then it like should have defaulted. I think we call the price list was in roles. Or purse list. Yeah. This is directory. So this yeah. says directory. Gotcha. So okay. this, so it should be okay. Yes, it is. Cool. So let's keep this up for a second. Um, we've talked about the glue that the SDK is giving us. So I was actually slightly misspoke earlier. I said, it's going to generate the go glue. It doesn't even generate it. That's baked into the base image. Um, but it's going to effectively wire up. This, this file is, is the really important part where it wires up our role on line five with the custom resource that we created, which is gonna be lines two, three, and four. Um, and again, going back to what I said earlier about that API version being a combination namespace and version construct, it's very enumerated here. Group is the first half of that, and then version is literally just called version. So what this is saying is, um, when the operator starts, it's going to establish in Kubernetes something called a watch. And the watch is going to be made on this. Um, there's an abbreviation for that stuff. I think it's written out GVK or like as in group version kind. Although now mm. that I say that, it sounds yeah. awkward to say out loud. So that's even GVK. Use it. GVK is how I refer to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's going to say whenever that particular combination and that particular type is uh, something happens to it, it's created, it's deleted, it's updated. It's going to notify whoever's watching that. And in this case, this operator is going to be watching it. And then that line five is telling this operator code, run this role. And that role is going to run and the glue is going to take pieces out of our priceless object and stick them into the variable names used by Jinja. And it's going to actually do conversion for us for a convention. So the Ansible convention is snake case. That's what the underscores. Um, so snake my case. underscore Sh title. Snake. Isn't that called snake? What is snake case? Like my underscore title as compared oh, to okay. camel oh. case, which is lowercase m. Lowercase and then uppercase. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. We actually yeah. had a conversation about this in one of the, the Twitch. But never <laughs> never did the never did snake case come up. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Interesting. I could even be wrong on that. I'm we're, but I'm pretty sure this is called some and now I'm gonna Google this. Um so it's it does that conversion for us though, where it lets us retain the typical um constructs in Kubernetes. Yeah, okay, so the underscores. Yeah, yeah. Lowercase foo underscore bar, yeah. Foo underscore cool. hello world. Um, is that developer case. side of me. Um, and then camel case, yeah. So camel case, camel case, snake case, regardless, it keeps the conventions from both. So you don't have to modify your Ansible roles to look awkward to fit into the constructs normally or the conventions normally used in the custom resource. That's a really long way of going to that, but yes, <laughs> we all learn what snake case is, so victory. Um, yes. <laughs> Small so victories. this is important. Now, the reason we did this is because the role, uh, as it was defaulted, will work if we build the image because it's going to understand the relative path and everything like that. Since we're running outside of the cluster, we have to explicitly say, hey, Ansible, this is the directory of the role I want you to execute. So again, 10 minutes to explain something that was effectively a, a 10 second change, but <laughs> it's important. That's why we do these things. Yes, yeah, like right, D &D, right? here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's see how this works. We're gonna try open or operator SDK, run dash dash local dash dash watches dash file local.yaml. This sounds watches so space. Oh, watches. No, watches file. Watches dash file. And then we're going to point it to local.yaml. Okay. 
Meanwhile, like my family is overhearing this and they think I'm some kind of like crazy hacker because it sounds yes, like, that's right. it sounds yeah, like yeah. every movie where we're like, run, right. dash, dash, yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> local. Watch that was fall. yeah, and hackers <laughs> this, is what I'm thinking of. That and hackers, the movie Hackers, yeah, yeah. that was a when great he, scene, by the way. Yeah, that, I love <laughs> you guys. This is why I love working with nerds because you know the exact yeah. scene is he's repeating it to Joey, and he's yeah, like, yeah and, and he's typing it in right on the phone in the phone booth, yes, yes. In yeah, the phone yeah. booth. and then there's 13 year old me being like, This guy's a genius, this guy's a like, genius. Oh my god. Yeah. This is how I feel yeah. when I sit on airplanes next to people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. My wife, Jessica, so I've worked from home 14 years now, and she's been home since we've had kids. And uh, so she's seen me working before, but a couple weeks ago, I was working on actually operator stuff, and I had two terminals side by side. One was a log, so it was just kind of scrolling, and one was this type of stuff. Yeah. And she gives me this look, she goes, that work? And I'm just like, yeah, I actually do yeah. something. I'm not just yeah. sitting up and farting around in the computer all day. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> wow. How, how do you know what that <laughs> says? What does that say? Yeah. I know. Um, but to, and, and like, honestly, out of that log messages, I was, you know, looking for one word, but I would never tell her that. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm parsing all of this shit. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm a genius. All right, hit enter. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's doing something. Ooh. Trying to become the leader. Oh shit, this is good. This is actually a very good error to hit. We forgot to create the custom resource definition, so it can't possibly set up a watch for it. Exit nice. out of here. That's a good reason. Well, it, it, it did by itself. <laughs> it, it exited by itself. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> it, it listened to me. Um, it's funny because I, that was accidental, but I actually do this on purpose when I demo it. So okay. we're trying to it, talk in terms of this price list and we've created the custom resource definition, but we actually have to get it into the cluster. So before we do that, do an OC get price list. No surprise, this is going to come back and say error. Server doesn't have a resource type. Again, we haven't created it. Um, let's take a look at what was generated. So open up deploy slash CRD slash, um, yeah, the, the CRD ending one. I never type it out. It was the tab completed. Um, yeah, exactly. There it is. This guy here? Yeah, so it generates a fair basis for us. Um, it always cracks me up when they generate the kind and the plural, the, the plural and stuff like that, the kind we specify. But I said this the last time I did this demo too. I really want to do a test of like octopus and see how smart its pluralization is. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I don't think it is very smart. No, I don't think it's very, it just takes whatever you give it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> now, ultimately we'd want to go in here and add in a spec section that says, hey, there, here are the allowable fields. And then we add validation on it. So that way, um, open slash shift slash Kubernetes is going to give us some resource checking. So if we say you can indicate instances uh, and it has to be a number and it's required and we don't do that, um, then Kube is just going to initially pitch the resource out and say, hey, dumbass, fill it out correctly next time. Yep. <laughs> for now, this is going to let us put in anything and I'm okay with this for now. Uh, that open API schema and then the type object basically means we could put foo equals bar. And this is safe because if our operator is not looking at it, we can type in all the junk we want there and we'll just ignore it. So go ahead and do an OC apply dash F on this file. And don't hit clear. Try to not do the muscle memory. Don't hit clear after this. Okay. And I, I say that because I control L just. In yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> well, if you didn't tell me, I was going to do it. Okay. Cool. So it's going to create it. Now do an OC get price list again. And the reason I said to not do the clear is it's at the top of the screen where we got the error initially. It's different now. Now no resources found. And that's good. That's saying OpenShift now understands talking about the type or talking about the kind price list. Um, and now we can start to manipulate yeah. it in our typical fashion. So the, the top is saying, I don't know. I don't even know what a price list is. The bottom is saying, I know what a price list is. You don't have any. Exactly. Exactly. Do you have like screen or Tmux set up on here? Tmux, my friend. Oops, bash Tmux command not found. Oh, I have it. New system here, it. Fedora 32. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just because when I usually uh, demo this, pseudo bang bang. Yes, good man. <laughs> I saw you use the, uh, the bang dollar sign earlier. I was, see, oh. this, is the, this is the stuff I love about this, like yeah. seeing people's UIs. Like this is a power line setup, it looks like. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I, I suspect you don't have a custom Tmux then if you just rebuilt this machine. I have mine yeah, in my yeah, no. files because I'm like compulsive about it. But I love watching how people like do their thing. Um, so, okay, split it into two panes just because it's going to be simpler. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, oh, this is like a fresh install. Hold on. Control, it should uh, be B and then hyphen, I think. Is it hyphen? No buffer. 
Um, is it pipe? I remapped mine, so I damn it. I remapped mine too. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me let me grab my my T Mux. <laughs> yeah, or that's gonna be way faster. Yeah, this, it'll be faster than than me. Uh, um, I'm impressed. I remember Control B because I I move mine to Control A. So, you know what? I keep mine in Control B. Interesting. Um, I also I have uh, Windows key A for launching terminals, so I'm just repeatedly banging on it. Okay, so let's do. Uh, oops. This, Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to divert everything with this, but this demo does look better if you have the two panes going up, or I guess you just do two terminals side by side if you're sharing desktop. Point is, we're going to want to watch the logs and do the create at the same time. There we go. Okay, Perfect. now I have. No. <laughs> I'm going to be have... even more obnoxious. I'm going to have you do a third pane. So give me another Where? horizontal pane. Uh, which one on the top one or the bottom one? Uh, we'll split the bottom one. Split the bottom one. Okay. And do a horizontal. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So on this one, let's set up. Um, oh, sorry. The bottom right. Let's set up a watch on OC get all. So this is where I kind of should have driven because I've just done this kind of demo and um, I have my, my reasons for doing this. But nice. Okay. First problem, we already have all of this shit deployed because of oh, our dry I, run that wasn't so dry. So let's clean all that out. Okay, so let's uh, uh, control C out of this. Uh, let's just create a new project. Can we just put this in a new project, right? That's fine. Project. Um, okay, now now name. We need a name. Baby Yoda. Yay. <laughs> Baby Yoda. All right. Should we do snake case? I don't think it gives a snake case. Okay. I don't think it would either. It's super restrictive. Already on project baby Yoda. OC. Okay, so let's do the watch. Oh, someone's dog is happy. Family saw him. Okay. So oh, gotcha. it <laughs> Go back up to the top pane and let's do that run local command again. Oh wait, that's something else. Um, okay. So upper operator SDK, uh, yep. run. Mm -hmm. Dash dash. Let me see if I remember this from memory. Dash local. Mm -hmm. Dash dash watches. That watches file like that. Dash between watches and file. Yep. Uh, watches mm -hmm. in the namespace baby Yoda. Okay. That's good. And then it should now actually start up correctly because it has the CRD. Now the one thing I forgot to kind of explain is what we're doing here. Um, so. The, the actual deployment of an operator is as a container. So, um, and Christian was, was talking about the, that typical flow. So we build an image, we push it somewhere, we deploy that image in our cluster, we run our test. Um, the developer in me, that is an entirely too fat of an inner loop um, because I'm also a shitty coder. So I need to very quickly see when I make a mistake and just be able to bounce it. What we've done now is we've taken um, the, uh, we're running, the operator effectively as a process outside of the cluster, but it is attached to the cluster. If we look at those log messages, it's looking pretty solid. So what should happen is when we create a custom resource, it's got this watch going. It just happens that this process lives outside of our cluster. So we should see the logs go flying up. It should actually field it. We should see some very Ansible looking logs come out. And then we should see our resources start getting created in the bottom right. So if you wanna to go to the bottom left for me. Cool. All right, so let's do this. Uh, and there we go. All right, let's. Uh, we're actually gonna have to edit it. So vi into um, deploy slash crds slash autocomplete, and then type v1 and autocomplete the rest. There you go. And now size. Uh, this was this was generated by default by the project. Yeah, scaffolding. So we changed this right. Yeah, we ch chose to name it instances. So um, let's just do one just for simplicity. So again, take a look. This is really the important part of this whole thing that API version and kind. We are now talking not in terms of all the stuff we did in the first hour of deployments and services and routes. This is what the end user is gonna do. They're gonna create a price list resource and they're gonna talk just in terms of those fields. So instances applies to a price list. So that's all they care about. They don't have to know, oh, this means the, the actual PHP deployment as compared to the MySQL part, or is this used in services? They don't care. They know that they're saying, I want a price list application. I want it to be run off of one instance. 
And again, they stubbed out, they being the Operator SDK, stubbed out um, an example for us that we edited. We could have hand jammed this ourselves. Uh, it's just simpler to use an existing one and build off of it. Cool. So you can exit out of here and do an OC apply on this. Oh, you see that? It's going. We are seeing some errors up top. Reconcile though. error. It can't reconcile. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, you don't have all of the libraries installed because this is what bit me too. I had to pip install OpenShift before it ran. Um, do you have actually, I should, probably should have asked this because you said it's a new install. Do you even have Ansible running locally? Yeah, or like what do you have on the box? You have Ansible. See. Okay, it's probably just um, you need to install the actual K8s modules. If we dug through that, I bet you that's what it's telling us. So it says process, da -da. so it's a pointer, to a controller, worker. No such file or directory in the middle. I th I'm pretty sure this is the message because we don't have the k modules. For uh, the, for Python? Locally. So again, remember that we're running this outside of an image. So the image itself, when we build it, is gonna have the k uh, modules. Gonna have all, stuff. yeah. So I don't, since it's, that's gotcha, your gotcha. local machine needs them, mm. yeah. I wasn't sure how far down this much, you know, you've kind of dorked with in the past. Um, I just pip installed oh, yeah. OpenShift and got it. Um, you guys probably know a better way. That's then pip install OpenShift. You're gonna have to sudo it to install at that level. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Sudo, sudo or sudo? <laughs> I sudo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's context specific for me. Sudo, sudo. Yeah, just depends. Mm -hmm. Install. Cool. All right. Try bouncing the top process and see what happens. Okay. Um, before actually, don't start it yet. Don't start it yet. Don't start it yet. I'll, I'll do just an, it up. Um, and then go back to the bottom left then and do an OC get price list because I'll bet you that resource still exists. Okay. Ah, it, it created it, yeah. Right, now, so the way I've done this demo in the past too is without even running the operator, I'll create this and you show that, cool, we can create a resource of a defined type. Nothing's gonna yep. happen because there's no watches, but that's perfectly valid. Um, so at this point, we can yeah, just- Yeah, because we created the CRD. We have, this, we have the controller, right? We have and be careful because what we're talking about is not the controller at all. Yeah, we yeah, no, no. So we're, we're, we're yeah, we have the definition. We don't have the controller. Yep. So um, right, and technically speaking, the controller is not needed. It's just not going to do anything. Yeah, it just doesn't. You get this at least. Yeah. So cool. We've got resources out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, resources, but you don't have any anything controlling it. Yeah. Could use it uh, as a really, really shitty key value store. There we go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're very heavy. Key value right, yeah, I, mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> I said our Kubernetes is a distributed key value store. Yeah, it's, it's just, <laughs> perfect application want... for Kubernetes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna delete this first. Yeah. Uh, now this is another thing where you know you don't technically need the operator running to delete them. Um, the way the parent-child relationship is going to work, anything created by the price list is going to be owned by the parent resource. So that would have trickled down and deleted all of our deployments and stuff like that had we actually gotten some. All right. So run the operator. Now, while that's starting up, I will mention that had we not deleted it, we very likely would have seen it get resolved anyway. This would mm -hmm. wake up and then the watch would immediately get told, hey, we have a custom resource you're going to care about. And then it would start running the Ansible and very likely would have brought us back to a working situation. Since we're still in this debugging mode, it was one more headache I didn't want to deal with. And it gave me that kind of tangent to talk about the custom resource existing outside the controller. Um, but yeah, try creating it again. Let's see what happens. Uh, no, uh, well, you could apply, right? There yep. you go. Oh, it's doing something. No, we're still seeing issues there. In the interest of the stream, it might be better to just- Oh, it says open. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. There are yeah, yeah. two more things we need to do. Yeah, um, yeah. The Ansible this one's is, wonky. Yeah. There's Ansible Runner and Ansible Runner HTTP. Um, it's still probably faster than building the image, but if you just want to go move on to the image route. But for Helm, this is way simpler, where you don't need even Helm running locally. 
um, for or installed locally. For Ansible, there's a couple of other requirements. It's Ansible, it's the Kate's module, and then these other two pieces called Ansible Runner and Ansible Runner HTTP, which are not, again, it's just pip commands, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's your call how you want to proceed. If you just want to continue down working on this route, because this looks really cool once you get it running, or yeah. if you just want to move on to the I've never done it this way. So it, though, I, I think it'd be cool just to keep going just because I've never okay. done it this way. <laughs> Let's do this. I've done it the other way, to, but yeah. Um, go up to the top, close that out. I'm sorry, just kill this process. Do a pip search Ansible dash runner. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Do you want me to page up here? Yeah, it might have been at the very top because it was a direct match. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Okay, so it's the first one. So let's do pip install Ansible runner and then explicitly say after that Ansible dash runner dash HTTP. If I remember correctly, the last time I did this, that second one came for free, but it doesn't hurt to specify it. Uh, Ansible runner HTTP? Yep. So again, this is, to be super clear about this, this is just because nope. we're running it. Um, Got a GG, GCC error. Probably need the Python header. It's Python dash dev, Python three dash dev, uh, DNF install it. No, you got to DNF install that. Miss the install. S in install. Is it dev or developers? I think it's Fedora, it's devel. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Um, yep. Well, there it goes. Look at that. Okay. It's doing, it's doing stuff. All right, back to our pip. There we go. Let's read this time. That looks good. Okay. So again, this is all just because we're running it locally and it, it's how it manages to wire everything up and run the Ansible and stuff like that. You know, it feels a little wonky because we're doing this like error, fix it, error, fix it. Once you get this running, um, it, it's a much smoother process. Yeah. I would say delete the custom resource again, like we did last time, just so it's, we can see the separation between the operator starting and it actually kicking in and doing something. There we go. So watches again. Skipping leader election. Okay. All right. Zip zip cool. started. Okay. So then here we do create. No apply. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, it's gone. Okay. OC apply. What is your buffer history? Like six? You get like two. <laughs> I don't know why it's gone. Hold on. Apply. Oh, okay, there it is. Uh, rest is, it's okay. There, there it is. There we go. Okay, yeah. that's what we want to see. Yeah. Much better. We actually see Ansible now. We see nice. Ansible, cool. Um, and then we should see, assuming we have Ansible our- Ansible exited successfully. Okay. I like that. So the oh, fact that, that we means. don't actually see any resources created is interesting though, because now this is telling me we have an issue with the actual playbook itself. The playbook itself, correct. Yes, right. which is why one of the other benefits of doing this, we have these logs here and just bouncing it is super fast at this point. Um, no scroll up to the Ansible output itself. That's the wrong, there we go. Yeah. Control You're forgiven for fat fingering this because the commands in, in Tmux are a little wonky. Yeah. It just says log runner, Ansible runner exiting successfully. Did we, oh, we have the templates. Don't we need some piece that uh, oh tasks? Yeah, we actually. <laughs> yeah, you actually have to put something in. Text. We actually have need to actual, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> so, but by, by the way. This is why this is, and this is the beauty of though, of running it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so th this, this is funny because everyone's like, well, this is, it's not going to work because you have absolutely no tasks. The task is empty. So we <laughs> thought they were successful. Of course it's successful. So it's, it's so successful because we did because there was not absolutely no task. It didn't even LS a file. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the task is the task should be easy. Um uh so here we just do name um uh, deploying. Just make it easy. And this we're doing the Kates module. And in the Kate's module, we're doing a state equals present. And then a definition. Actually, let's do a uh, 
There you go, smack in the middle. Yeah, right here, this guy. So definition, lookup template, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 yucky, schmackety. Um, so it is like that, okay. And then the template's called um, roles. That was the prices. deployment, I think. Template. Oh, there was two, there was also service. Oh, and route, Jesus. Okay, so then this here is deployed IAM. All right. Now you're also going to want the service and the route. Yeah. Well, do we do we want to? No. Do you want to deploy? Do the de <laughs> burn 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 on the boil the ocean or? Exactly. This is why yeah. we went down this route in the first place. So this is called Tmux LS. So Tmux attach for those who don't use Tmux. Um, I don't need to do T0, but you can do. You could also done uh, dash B dash C for creating a new window within Tmux. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then shift between like them. But this, I don't know. I don't know the yeah. keys to go between them because I have I have to shift left and right. That's way too much Tmux for me. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> I know. When you but fly like, around on it though. You look badass. I know. Yeah, you look yeah. Badass. But there we go. It's control uh, just, control B and it's for the next right. And that's right. That's right. Okay, so delete the old um, custom resource. I think we're missing another step, but let's, let's just see here. Uh, OC delete, del delete. Let's see if we run into it. And then this here is local. What's cool is that when you this set is, it up this way, it is almost as fast as just writing and debugging the role itself. So when now- you're not doing the yeah. image build, you have the logs yeah. available right here. So I can already tell, so the way I used to build it before, I could already tell you this is even like, you know, um, stumbling through this, I'm actually going to use it, this method now because it saves me from having to build it, push it to Quay, and mm -hmm. then and then deploying that into a new. Versus here, I can just like run it locally and just do it. Yeah, um, right. Instead no of trying to uh, required. Minimally yeah, exactly. more difficult than just straight up running Ansible against your role and testing it that way. Apply. Ansible. That's what we want to see. Failed. That's oh. good. Keep it is, running. It's, Keep you know, running. You it's funny because it right. I try to tell my students that too. I'm like, you get to these points where like, oh, this is that metadata crap. Um, failed is actually a good thing. I mean, we're at a different error now. Yeah, right. a different. Yeah, it's a different error. Yeah, that means you're progressing. It's it's In, progress. This is gonna fail because metadata is undefined though. Yeah. Because Unless, yeah. Why because isn't that created yet? Yeah, you would think the the run, because this tells me that there, there's no, um, the downward API isn't coming in for whatever reason. Right, yeah. Test me, line three, column three, but maybe elsewhere. Hmm. Huh. Do we need to wire these up somehow in um, VARS? I don't think, I'm wondering. Or pass it. Oh, you know what? So you might not need the namespace, the metadata dot. So I'm looking at my example right now, and I just use the curly brackets namespace. I don't actually have metadata in front of it. Let's see, what do I have here? So what's funnily enough, so that's um, I actually in my exam in my notes here, I have meta meta dot meta dot name. Not that's metadata. what someone in chat saying too. Meta dot yeah. name. So this okay. Well, it's not working the other way. Let's try it that way. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now now that we're heading this point, I'm super glad we decided to invest the time in getting it running locally instead of building yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Deploy uh no, it's not a deploy, it's in roles, right? Roles price list, um templates, and then metadata is just meta to data. Let me change that. Uh to meta. There's a VI way to do this, but it will actually oops. It would do what I just did or now. <laughs> change change the ones I don't want. Um, okay, next. And then dot, 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 dot. Next, dot, 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 okay. Let's see, if I was doing this the, the way I would used to, do, used to do this, I would have to rebuild this and push it up to Quay. Right. Um, yeah. But here I could just like test locally. So you, you've, you've converted me here. 
Yeah. This will be interesting because we didn't delete the custom resource. Yeah, yeah. I was so just we'll thinking see. About no, that. this should kick in. It should almost immediately start running it. So you got right. it. It's it running it. Looking different error. Yeah. It's different. Keep going. So what does it say here? It says error. Invalid name, example dash priceless dash priceless. Is there like a length restriction a on it? Typo? No. Right away you go with a typo, man. Okay. You make one mistake. You make, <laughs> no, you make well, one mistake. <laughs> you, you make one mistake. <laughs> it's like calling it. Mm. So it's Not trying to get. Trying to get zap logger. It says invalid spec template metadata labels, invalid value. That value map string. Okay. Selector does not match template. Thing? That's what I'm thinking. Pull up the uh, pull up the templates. Hopefully, it'll just be Invalid very obvious when we look at it. String. Uh, just a template, right? Oh, uh, you want to make a template? App. Look at app. Something's going on in there. App. So the label is metadata. Priceless. So whatever the name is, dash priceless. So example dash right. priceless dash priceless. What would it be called? Go back to the air. Can you go back to the air? Yep. See, this is T Mux in, in action, man. Yeah. yeah. You. Field, field value create <laughs> object. Field value invalid. Failure message. Deployment dot apps example priceless priceless is invalid. Spec template metadata labels. Invalid value map string. Yeah, string Ryan's saying maybe app. it's the hyphens. Priceless. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's the hyphens or if it's just the sheer length of it. Maybe um, it could be now either we can, one. We can kind of fix this quickly. So go delete the custom resource. Yeah, this is the CR. So this, um, ah. And then let's just change the name of the CR of the actual resource created because that's super wordy anyway. So yeah, uh, delete. And then at Jafar's thinking like priceless, priceless is just too much anyway. Like it might not even be able to support that. Yeah. So we'll, do, I mean, we'll make the, the whole custom resource V1. Uh -huh. And then just change just, the name to EX. Or, or wait, what are we doing here? Uh, Ooh, Hoth. Uh, um, 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 Boba Hoth. Hoth, okay. Hoth, Hoth. That's nice and short. No, no. Nice yeah, and short. Hoth. All right. Hoth. <laughs> Battle of Hoth. <laughs> Okay, so here it's um, apply. Yes. Okay, so here, oops, I need to come up here. More error. Okay, so what's it, what's it complaining about now? Selector does not match template labels field, spec template metadata labels. Unprocessable un entity. Map. Invalid label map. That's such an engineer way of saying it. <laughs> so it says map string. So am I, is this? It feels like an indentation issue, but it may be. Or quoting. Is it Maybe the selector issue? happens. Maybe the selector app label doesn't match the metadata. Labels app meta dot name dash priceless. priceless. Yeah. Check the other things beside deployment though, because oh no, that's right. We're only doing deployments. Never we're only do, yeah. We're only we're not we're not boiling oceans yet. Only rivers. Boiling a teaspoon of water right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, this is when I wish I had a core uh, as a little dev nearby. The uh, creation timestamp is null. Maybe just delete that, maybe? Yeah, I would delete that. That's unnecessary. So let me delete that as well up here, creation timestamp. Go back. Maybe make it simple as just that. Do you want me to go back to something yeah, else? Yeah, go back to the air real quick because I match labels is not templated. According to somebody in chat, selector match labels dot app. Maybe a selector app label doesn't match the metadata. If it's that, guys, I'll yell at you. 
It's match late. Hold on. What? Oh, I, I see it. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I see it. I see it now. Is is this guy right here? Good eye, guys. Good yeah, eye, good eye. Guys. Yep. Good eye. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Thank world. you. See, th this is why this is why the Twitch thing is cool, right? Yeah. So, okay. So I uh, should be able to. Oops. You know what it is, and and just to continue to throw Christian under the bus, it's because Chris and I were so worried about him mistyping. Twice That's right. Yeah, exactly. That right. we weren't we, looking we at the we forest were. through the trees. Yes. Yeah, we're exactly. so focused. <laughs> we're so focused on the word, we couldn't realize the whole file. Okay. Um, and this is local. Okay. Yeah. Oops, I don't want that. I want you to do control B down. Apply. Okay. All right, everyone. You, you guys ready? Yep. <laughs> Hold on to your boots. Hold Jeez. on. Yeah. Hold on. It's, it's doing something. There it is. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. So there we go. Success. We got success. I love it. All right. All right. We couldn't have done it without the audience. All right. It's true. Thank you very much. Quite literally. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> yeah, we we would have been here for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have been here for hours. It's like, are you we, sure? We, you, it, was, it was inspiring right. audience participation because this is a Twitch channel after all. That, we want this interactivity. That's right. Exactly. So we threw a few intentional errors in there to make sure you're- Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, obviously. Uh, yeah. Is, that, is that what we did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We threw totally. some, some of these in there to make you guys feel like- I was acting. That's right. <laughs> acting. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, All right, next, so at, next, what's up? So at this point, um, so this is actually really cool. I'm actually going to start um, using this, um, doing it locally, because um, the idea is now I can do- ooh, ooh, um, Go back, go back real quick. Back to the other pane. Oops. Uh -huh. So you shut down the operator, but you didn't delete the resources. Yep. Delete the resource. It should clean everything up. And I was trying to say this before, and I feel like I stumbled over my explanation. There is- um, and a resource called price list or of type price list. And it is the parent of that pod deployment and replica set that were created by it. So Kubernetes understands how to delete children like that. Um, so we delete the parent, it's gonna go and do all of our garbage collection for us. There are ways to interrupt that if for some reason the operator needed to do some kind of they clean up step before. before them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know that you can do it in the Ansible world. I know you can definitely do it in the Go operators. Now that I say that, you might be able to even do it in the Ansible if you set a finalizer on it, which is ultimately how you do it. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it's cool though. It's it's another, I shouldn't say benefit, but a nice side effect of doing it in this broken out model is even if you do exactly what you did and accidentally kill that first, it's fine. You can still very easily clean up after it by just killing the resource. Cool. All right, so while you wire in the service and um, route, I'm gonna take a quick bio break. So keep typing. There you go, cool. Yeah. So then here, uh, I'm gonna do, uh, where was I? Um, not handlers, price list. Tasks. Uh, tasks. Yeah, so the, the other one. You've got a deployment, a service, and I forget the other one. Route. Route, that's right. What's going to be interesting is the route, but we'll. Like, uh, whoa, 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 which price list? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, I just wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. 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 I want to make sure. <laughs> I was I like, right. whoa, <laughs> <laughs> You're going too fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here I got uh, this guy here, and then. Uh, yeah. So I want. Uh, so this is a service. So I'll call this service .yaml.jinja2 and here is route. There you go. Cool. cool. That's the right order. So it should be good. Service present. Yeah. So now I now I'm I'm starting to see the power, right? Of running this locally. Yes, because and, and anytime I iterate, I don't have to rebuild it, rebuild it, rebuild it. I can just run it. Right. And um, to and to reiterate to folks, what is the flag to do it locally? 
I think it's dash dash local. Dash dash local. <laughs> That's run, it. It's the run mm-hmm. command in general, and then yeah. okay. you have to put dash dash local. I'm not sure what happens if you don't. I don't think I've ever used the command. Otherwise, you can do this for Helm and Go as well. Um, and actually, you don't even have to say type or anything like that. Uh, and like I said, the Helm one is actually a little bit smoother because you don't need these extra libraries locally. Um, right. And right. it just kicks in. Yeah. So we should. Um, so instead of uh, deploy CRDs, let's have some fun with this. Oh, uh, we should, instead of hot, we should do Alderaan, right? So when we delete it, it's like the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Alderaan, Alderaan, like that? Uh, no. Looks- There's two R's in it or something like that. Let me double check. Alderaan. Hold the audience. Two A's. A L D E R A A N. But Chris, ah. you still get credit for. Okay, so I that. took it some credit. Yeah, so no, Wait, not you. Still, Chris, Chris gets it for knowing that there was some kind of duplicate. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. It's A L D E R A A N. Two A's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew there was a double something. Alderon. Okay, so when we delete it, it's like the Death Star getting. I dig it. That's right. <laughs> you can go Kishik and just type in a whole bunch of Y's, and you'll probably get it close to right. Yes. And the fact that I caught that reference proves how nerdy I am. That's I like this group. <laughs> this is a really fun group for nerdy stuff. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We got let's do something. so much creation. There's a deployment. Deployment. There's is the service. Service. So now you can see why I like this TMUX setup like this because yes, just being able it's to just watch just everything instant. just get spawned up. Yeah. That's very, very nice. And then there's one more thing we added, right? The route. The route. Uh, so you have to scroll down in the other show window. Up in an OC get all. Oh, well, they don't. Oh, no, they don't. You're right. How would you get the route? OC, OC, OC get all, comma, route. Oh. You can do them both at the same time. Oh, like that? Yep. Oh, cool. And if you really wanted to, you could do comma price list and show that in here as well. Um, although I'm a, the, the fan these days of just doing the specific ones I want, like I don't care about the replica set, so right. I will use yeah. So you can do like OCS, uh, yeah, route Toy. and um, priceless or priceless, yeah. I mean, there's nothing terribly interesting about showing the priceless. You can do that off on the left side, but it's kind of cool that you could get them all in. There. Yeah, so you can do uh, OCS, well, priceless. It's Alder on there. Yeah. So, so I, I can actually technically go. Oh man, this is this is ugly. Um, OC, OC, let me go in another window. OC get routes. Oh, that copy. That's the one problem with using Tmux. Yeah. Is if it goes to two lines, copy is useless. Oh yeah. There we go. All right. We got the route. We got the route there. We got Which is cool. No we database. We didn't so set fine. up the database yet. We know database, so, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mariah's not singing. Mariah's not. <laughs> but there are there's a couple things that are worth um, pointing out at this point. Uh, if you go back to your terminal and just show the custom resource YAML, and I know this has taken us an hour and a half ish to get to, but at the end of the day, all the user had to type in to get that was I didn't stretch that out long enough. V1 tab. Oh, V1 no, tab. I know. Now, now, now I see where you're going. Yeah. So all the users have to type this, and they got all of those resources. What's even cooler is once we update the operator for the uh, database, that's going to come for free underneath this as well. Yeah. And you can take that to the next level in terms of upgrading an operator and having it upgrade the resources at the same time, where a new version of the operator is going to understand how to resolve it. Now, we didn't get to see a lot of that reconcile loop because the Ansible operator, the Ansible operator functionality in the SDK did it for us. Um, and in fact, it gets really cool. If you were to go, do we still have one running? We have what? one in terms one of- what? Uh, sorry, this, did you delete the- uh, Oh, no, no, I didn't, I didn't delete it. Okay, do an OC edit on price list. Oh yeah, that's right, OC edit. Price list. In fact, exit out of this. Go back to your. Um, do we just a watch on OC get pods? No, sorry. Back into your other pane. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, so bottom right, watch OC get, OC pods. get pods. If I spell it right. 
Poe. Yeah. Okay, now on the left side, OC edit price list, and I'm gonna have you increment that instances up to two. And we should see uh, the operator start to spaz out again. And yeah, let's, mm. let's see here. It'll run let's itself say, again. Let's say three. There you go. Go big or go home. And boom, go the operator go gets notified. So that this is where this reconcile loop. loop comes in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not just when a custom resource is created. It's any kind of change to it. And that means your operator has to be smart enough. Um, number one, it's got to be item potent because if every time it got a reconcile request, it goes to create a new pod, that would get out mm -hmm. of control real fast. Mm -hmm. um, but that item potency we get for free out of Ansible here because Ansible, if I were to just run this role multiple times, is not going to keep spawning them. Correct. That gets a little trickier in the Go operator because you have to manage all of that yourself, but yeah. you obviously get all of the power of a full-blown programming language. But that means if we do do one of these for a Go operator, you're going to see me write code that says, okay, make sure that there's a deployment for this. Cool, it's there. Now let's make sure the configuration is consistent with what was in the CR mm -hmm. because it's all declarative. We're not Inside of the controller and inside of the operator, you're not seeing operations that say added resource, deleted resource, updated resource. It's just saying, here it is, Here it is. figure yeah. it out. And uh, the operator is then looking at the reality of the situation, the desired situation, and resolving the two. Um, beauty of the Kates modules is that they do that for us. So yes. we didn't add any update logic in, but we effectively got it for free as evidenced by the fact that we now have three pods running because all we had to do was update the configuration parameters. Well, we can, we can and, also, go sorry, ahead. Chris, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we can go, we can actually attack this the other way too. If I do an OC edit deployment, right. And I say in the deployment, um, let's say I want um five replicas right Ta -da. Um, yeah but it'll, I just, it'll give it, me five replicas but then the control loop here it's like no you, it's gonna kill it, it yeah. yeah yeah it kills it it's like you, you told me three the operator right. says three so i'm gonna keep it at three but i think it's very important to point out like how quickly that reconcile loop picked it up. Yep. Like even on a busier cluster, it's gonna happen very fast. Like this is using Kubernetes, Kubernetes native eventing to drive operator like triggering. So you go in and you change that deployment file, it's gonna be like, yep, here you go. And then it's gonna be like, nope, you didn't say you wanted five, you want three, and it's gonna back it right on down. Yeah, this is, and also this is one of the things I have to explain the, uh, from people going from version three to version four, they're like, well, I, I can't scale the router anymore. It's like, well, it, we there's this different paradigm now. We we have this. We have operators, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's you're no longer controlling it via deployment. You're having the operator control it for you. So right. that's this is kind of like kind of what I wanted to show about editing the deployment. You can edit it in deployment, but the operator is going to go, nope, you told me three. I'm going to scale it back down to three. And the whole reason behind that is because it's easier to manage an operator we think than it is to manage all the different parts and pieces that you need YAML wise to have for your app to actually work in an open shift environment or a cloud native environment and running Kubernetes anywhere, right? Like mm -hmm. there's so many parts and pieces to running like a HA DB cluster, you know, <laughs> as, as multiple read write replicas and all that stuff, right? Like there's people that should be doing that for you so that you can roll that out and then continue building on the thing that adds value to your business as opposed Ryan. to the thing that just you have to work on iteratively yeah, to get deployed. It, Ryan pre uh, in chat brings up a, a good point that says this helps enforce best practices and usages expectations across the platform. Bingo. So you can you can enforce these best practices across the platform versus uh, go, going over with a big stick and hitting everyone in the head right. in the office. It, it's, it's taking a practice, <laughs> it's taking a good practice and operationalizing it. Yep. And that is what helps uh, our customers and people that use any software like get better at what they do is, you know, the oper automating and operationalizing best practices is like the DevOps way, not to get into the whole DevOps debate or anything. But like that is one of the key things that has come out of it is that if we can possibly automate it and we can possibly make this as clean as possible, let's just do it. Cool. So how much time check do we do we want to try? So we, now we got we're at 540 Eastern. 540 so Eastern. We got about how, 20 how long, minutes. 
20 minutes or so. Yeah. Do we want to keep going? Do we want to try to do the database part? So we want? We've, there's two directions I could see this going. We do the database part um, or we show the actual image building part and deploying it as a real operator as compared to this blown out version. Local one, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think there's be... a little more value in that because- Yeah, you're right. You can yeah, arguably we'll say if we can get one it. deployment out, we can get multiple deployments created. It's just yeah. So yeah. Case. So like just just to kind of um, go over it before I start building it, um, as you can wait, while, while you were while you were getting yourself a glass of water or whatever you're doing, um, uh, templates. No, no tasks. Task. Right. The the way I essentially just copied and pasted what I was doing before. Right. So the the logic is actually you know pretty easy, right? Once you have multiple YAMLs, you can just pretty much paste, 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 paste. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated, obviously, if you want to do like a watch or like if you're going to wait for a socket or whatever, but it's Ansible. So it's mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty straightforward. So And, um, and that's solved elsewhere. Like that's, that's yeah. an Ansible problem at that point. We are talking about the operator problems right now. Yeah. So the mechanics so, of getting that done in Ansible, you know, we, we, we've established that when we're, the three of us looking at something is still not enough eyes when there's other people yeah. watching us. So <laughs> we'll write all that off and be like, this is an Ansible question. We know Ansible can do it. So therefore the operator can do it. Let's do it with the operator stuff. So here let's, uh, so before we build it, we have to, I know um, we have to edit the operator um, e, not really. So it's not a before we build it type of thing. In fact, it probably makes more sense to edit this after because you're going to replace line 20 with the name of the image. we. Okay. Build. So that's what I was thinking about. Right. right. Yep. So, um, so right now what we've done is that running, I keep going to call it running exploded, even though that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. <laughs> that local running of a process outside the cluster is again, for testing purposes. And you've seen as we intentionally threw some errors in there. So you could watch the inner loop of debugging and rerunning. Um, now we're actually like, cool, this works. We want to ship it. We want to do things right. Going all the way back to uh, one of the first things you said in the stream is that uh, operators deployed as a pod. So we need to build it as an image. Um, and when we first generated the scaffold, we did see that um, they gave us a Docker file. So that's cool. We're just going to leverage that entirely. Uh, and that Docker file understands that if we put everything in the conventions expressed by the operator, which we totally did, um, it'll just <laughs> take care of that for us. You know, I, I say that and it sounds like I'm saying it tongue in cheek. We literally did because we, we, just, we yeah. wouldn't have got this working otherwise. And they made it so simple for us by generating that role and being like, here, edit this. And that's mm -hmm. what we did. We dropped stuff in. Yep. Um, so yeah, you're uh, doing what I never do and you're actually creating the repo ahead of time in Quay. So that way you yeah. can set it as public. Whereas I always push yep. it, try to deploy it, forget it's private. Forget it's you know, private, go back. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I guess, yep. um, <laughs> you know, uh, going, going here, the reason um, um, I'm creating a repo, right. is because once you build the image, you need it, you need it somewhere. Right. So I'm going to put it in Quay. Um, if you're doing this in your own, um, Local repository. Yeah, like local repository, you'd have to create it there, right? Whatever you need to do. You just need a place to house it. Um, so I'm going to make it public, right? Because it's, it's uh, Jason's fine. Started, I, I've gotten burned in the past. It's like, why isn't this? Oh, wait. How come I can't push? I log, you log in, you change your password three or four times. I can't yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just change your password. You're like, oh, crap, I forgot how to log into this. So okay, yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So we give it a name. So we'll do this. Uh, we'll call this what? Um, so we did Hoth. We did Alderaan. Uh, don't make me spell Tatooine. Uh, well, um, of course not. I'd make you spell that, but mm. uh, no, no, no. Just stick with the name that we we named the operator. It's just going to make life simpler, I think. Um, okay. So I, then, you know what? It doesn't matter for this. I take it back. Doesn't it matter? Wait. So what does what does chat say? Tatooine. Someone spelled it for me. Perfect. I feel like that's, is that spelled correctly? T-A-T-O-O, Tuin, T-O-I-N-E. Oh, yeah. two O's. Yep. Yep, I spelled it right. Two O's, one N, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you, uh, and I'm gonna go for mm -hmm. you for all my spelling mistakes there, okay. <laughs> well, At least the stuff is a little more reasonable to misspell. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, here I have a lot of repository. I always put mine in the Red Hat Workshops one because just, that's where I keep all my demo stuff. Uh, public, empty, create. 
All right, cool. So then here, uh, and then what I like to do is I like to do a podman login. Did I forget my password? I've succeeded. Cool. And then here. So it's operator SDK. Build, right? Base build, but then you're going to have to put uh, crap. Builder dash dash. Uh, yeah, okay. I feel like, like that, right? Podman. Yep. I think yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. Podman, and then um, where I want to put it, right? So I want to put it here. Got the queue. Got to get the queue, man. Got to get the queue for Quay or, or Key. And apparently in... Um... We gave up on that real fast. I remember yeah, yeah. Like, real like, fast. It's pronounced so, Key. And we're like, yeah, key. we kind of don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Australians and the New Zealanders, I think, are the only ones carrying that flag. I think yeah. even the English are, but everyone else calls it Quay. So whatever. Um, oh, yeah. We want to have to tag it, right? I'll put... I'll just put latest. Um, or do we want to version it? Right? Two V1. Yeah, why not? Okay. Building, building, building. We actually building. got the image builder flag. That's something that uh, when I first moved over to Podman, I kept forgetting to do. And it's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe by default it would have added the latest tag for us to the answer the question in chat. Yeah, by default it is latest. It'll always default. He went dirty. <laughs> Damn it, Ryan. V1 dirty. <laughs> oh, we almost had that. We should have done V1 dirty. dirty. This. <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> oh, Langdon, Langdon says the word is key in American English, too, just not the product project. Oh, really? Oh, huh. there we go. We just say Quay. We just named it something else because we can't. Whatever. Operator build complete. So... Then do I have to push it? It, sh it should be here. Right you do have no, to push it. And you have to use Podman to push it. It's okay. not built into the operator SDK. That's right. Okay. Right. Podman push. Uh, so I do bang dollar. Do you bang know that dollar. one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got some nice. bash food. This makes me super happy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> or key way. Someone says key way. Quay. It's not, now, now, now we started a, <laughs> a chat. Oh, I mean, this is not the first time. So we've, we've done, done Vem and Emacs. Alone. We've done Key Quay. What else have we done? There was something Emacs, else today. Key Quay, the the Kube Cuddle versus Kube Cuddle. Kube well, we didn't go yeah. too yeah. in deep in that. Well, we kind of went deep in that, but yeah. Well, well we, we also one yeah. completely random one, wasn't it? Like Odoo, Odo, Odoo, and Odo. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sudo and Sudo. What sudo. is the other one for sudo? Sudo and sudo. Ta sudo. Tabs versus spaces. Oh, so, don't get me started. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a tab guy. So uh, you would actually like go a lot more than I do because that's one of the first things that always throws me off. Oh, yeah. the tab. Second I, is I the like stupid import way. structure. Third is the stupid exception handling. Oh come on now. It's dumb. No, <laughs> don't call it all stupid. There's the. It is. <laughs> there's some. There's some very neat stuff. There is some neat stuff about go. This is very true. Those are the things that particularly irk me. Which I mean, oh, it, you know. Now they're talking about pseudo flags. I do pseudo dash s. Yeah, I do. I do. I do what spot. Zer. That is Amy. The, Amy. I do what Amy does. Sudo su dash. That's what I do. Yeah, like it yeah, just depends too. when you kind of learned how to do it, right? Like that's what I've figured out. Yeah, pseudo, I, I had to type that, but I couldn't actually remember off the top of my head. I had to let the muscle memory kick in to see what I do, and I'm changing to that. So the first. <laughs> The first uh, Unix I've ever used any kind of Nix was Solaris, and they didn't have sudo, so I yep. su dash was the the only thing. Wait, so when I when I started using sudo, I just started doing sudo dash. Cool. So I got my tags up here. So it's up here. Uh, security scan. It's queued. Yep, that'll After get scanned security. eventually. Push it. So it's pushed. It's there. Good stuff. All right. Give me a root shell YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> <It was awesome. laughs> I like that. YOLO. Oh, that's amazing. So then now. Um, now we edit the operator. So this so is, now again, 20, there's right? nothing fancy about this. This is just a deployment just, we're creating. It yeah. had stubbed us out for us and just said, hey, when you build your image, you're going to have to replace it. Um, with the actual image name. Otherwise, this is a deployment like any of it. Yeah, nothing special. Just key and Tatooine version one. Um, price list. Yep. Yeah, nothing else really. You need to you need to change here. Yeah, let's 
that should cover it. So this this here runner, no one's ever explained this to me. I don't know if any of you knew knows what this is. I guess I know what it is. Because I know it needs to mount something, right? In order to save. Yeah, runner needs some like scratch space basically to gotcha, do gotcha. stuff because and Ansible just, creates yeah. temp files. You know how Ansible, if you're watching like an Ansible yeah. playbook run, it creates a yep. temporary directory and all that stuff. That's what this is for. Um, it's sending all that stuff over via this this new temporary thing and that's being created in the pod gotcha. as opposed to you know the file system space. So empty dir. So I guess if you want to save it, you just set it to some sort of persistent volume. Yeah, you could in theory. Uh, I don't know why, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to save it for whatever reason. logging, yeah, debugging type purposes. Yeah, I mean, but you would catch all that out of the events. This is true too. So this creating a new project to put this in. Okay, so OC new project. All right, cool. Name time. Do we have any any suggestions? Uh, what was the the Jakku. Jakku. Uh, yes. Hayes. Jake. Moss Eisley would be the next. Moss one. Eisley is the another one. Yeah, Moss yeah. Eisley is good. Jakku yeah, is, is that A's. spelled right? No, it's two A's. I think. No, it's so Jakku like that. Jakku. Let me see. Jar Jar. J A K U U. J A K A U. Jakku. U U. Oh, U U. U's. There's always this. <laughs> no, wait, hang on. Wow. I think I'm screwing this up too. No, yeah, J A K U U. Welcome to Jack yeah J A K K U J A K K U Jakku. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Star Wars location. Jakku. Yeah. All right, here we go. So Jakku. OC project. All right, so we're in Jakku. Okay. Then... This desert hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and then do we we have to add the um, uh, the role service and role binding account. the service yep. account, right? Yep. Yeah. So we so do this the, service is what the operator is going to run as we do the service account or role first, but then you got to do both of them before the role binding. Role For obvious reason. No, the role first, and then role binding. Yeah, because it makes more sense that way. Role binding. Okay. All right, so we did um, role service account because it uh, it needs a user to run as uh, the role, right? We created a custom role and the role binding. Open um, up the role real quick. Might as well show the users just how yeah, I was really yeah. permissive it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot of verbs. You um, get a lot of research. Well, lots of words. API groups all of them, right? So <laughs> yeah, no. So that um, it doesn't actually mean all of them because if you look down, you'll see that's just the, the way the namespace works. Just API group uh, V1 is just oh, called gotcha, 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 gotcha. Blank. Okay. I used to think that too because it looks like it would be a wild card, but it's ultimately not. It's just I saying that's that. the V1 group, and then if you scroll up a bit, we're in the apps group. And this is the apps group for okay, gotcha. This is apps V1. Or deployments and things like that. Yeah, right here, app group B uh, apps. Here. Yeah, which would be would call apps V1. Um, but yes, so you'll see there though. Now some of this stuff is certainly needed, um, but you know, in this case, if we're not going to do PVCs, if we're not going to use secrets, yeah. uh, we likely want to trim that down. Um, Obviously, yeah. So like naturally, if you're doing this, like in a, uh, if you're writing a production grade, you would slim this down only to the absolutely necessary components. Yeah, bare minimum. Bare minimum as you needed. Um, it's an interesting, I don't know, and I, I do know people on the team, but I don't know the if the discussion took place on, because there's two wildly different ways of doing this, right? The scaffolding could have generated like this, which is super permissive, it'll run and you have to be good, or you generate it with absolutely nothing and you have to add it as you debug. need it. Which is the safer way of doing it, but it's way less user friendly. At yeah. that point, you're relying on someone else's error messages. I think, right? Like, uh, yeah. And that and, would worry me as like a, a product owner or something, right? Like, yeah, I agree. I think this is the best approach because you want you don't want people to be turned off by this. And yes. The yeah, sooner yeah. you get it working, to least for the, and then yeah. What's the learning curve? Right. 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 Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, the learning curve on an Ansible operator is pretty low versus yes. a go operator despite the fact else. that it's like a three hours to get here it ultimately yeah. don't well, i mean <laughs> yeah you're not writing go code right like you're, right. you're right, figuring yeah. out a scaffolding and putting uh the right ansible bits into it and the ansible bits that you're putting in aren't exactly easy right like look up templating it wasn't like something that people were like oh yeah that's the first feature we need to create you know right like yeah. that took some time 
So yeah. And then oh, we already did this, but just for the sake of com um, completeness, um, we do replace because it doesn't delete. Do we do uh, the upgrade yet? Not yet, but you also need to do the CRDs, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Technically yeah. speaking. So I, we already did this, but um, just for the sake of completeness, sure. this is the and, order and you were keep doing. keep in mind doing. for people new to this, the CRDs are installed cluster-wide. So that's why even though we made this new Jakku project, um, we, would, we would have to recreate the service account and all that for this namespace, but the CRDs are actually installed at the cluster level. So that's why this would be a done once works in any namespace type of thing, yeah, just for the right. CRD itself. So now we actually need to play the operator. So we do OC get pods, right? Nothing there. OC get all. Yeah, come on. There we go. Turn that key. There we go. There we go. So nothing's there. So we do OC create the operator. Uh, deploy. Oops. Operator. So OC get pods. It's doing Creating. something. Let's watch it. Come on. That's so while that's going, we can debate. Uh, I do the same thing. I do watch OC get, but it does offer a dash W flag to. I to never like that dash. W I don't flag. like the output. I don't either. <laughs> I've never I, met I, anyone who's like, oh, that output. I've never amazing. used it. No, yeah. no, no. Because yeah, it, I just I, I've never liked it. So now we got the so the pod is running. So that's yep. good. That's, cool. That's a start. So now we can yeah, that's a start. So now we can <laughs> we can create another. Um, just deploy the CR again. Yeah. Uh, do we got something? Provides only confusion. Someone says the dash, the dash, uh, the dash W. Someone says provides only confusion. I completely yes. agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's not. I think it it like it only shows changes. Or something, something it, weird it like that. It doesn't clear the screen, so sometimes yeah. you'll see duplicate rows mentioned. Yeah, and I've yeah. seen it like once or twice, and I'm like, yeah, no, and I've never gone back to try to figure out what it's actually doing because I'm like, this is wrong. Yeah, I, I don't think I've it. ever stuck with it long enough to figure that out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I have something that does this for right. me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and has worked for decades. How do you spell Moz Eisley? Uh, M O S. Uh, you, you might be right. Sorry, I'm yawning. You might be right, right on yeah, that yes. one. L E Y. Oh, there you go. L E Y. Okay. Yeah. This is now the third time I've managed to close Wikipedia without going down a serious <laughs> rabbit hole. A serious know. rabbit hole. Yeah. It's it's so. <laughs> Mom's eyes. Every time that's what I come up with here, I'm like, oh, I want to see what all this they got going on. So, uh, Bang Dollar, Jason's favorite. Yeah. All right. So let's let's actually get a window here open. Show. We'll see. Actually, let's uh, let's do it in the shell. Okay, so here, uh, OC. I guess you watch. would do the logs on the. Um, yeah. No on logs pod, dash yeah. f. No, this I'll do logs dash f. Yeah. So lo uh, OC logs of this price light price list here parse list. Uh, fun so fact, this is the same output. In Odo, it's uh, OC ODO log instead of logs, and yeah. in OC it's logs plural, and that continues to piss me off. Well, there you go. I but we can abbreviate pod, that. but we can't figure out logs. <laughs> we, yeah, 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 exactly. We can't figure out logs. We, we, we have no stance on logs apparently. <laughs> it's like the same thing with SSH and SCP. That yeah. port is capital, no. and one of them in lowercase, and the oh other yeah, one of them is lowercase, and the other one yeah. 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 <clears throat> so here, this is similar output to the run command, the, the SDK yes. run command. So it's so it's familiar to me already. Um, OC. You'll notice we actually became a leader now since we're running in a cluster. We don't have that message. I'm pointing my mouse at it again. I've gotten like yeah. two hours without doing that. About eight lines down, became the leader where we previously had a message saying, not running in a cluster. Became the leader. That's right. Yes, leader. Uh, so the pods are running over here. So OC create dash F. Uh, no, you said apply. Moss Eisley created. Nice. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to rev up. All the scoundrels of Moss Eisley gather. Yes, right. That's right. <laughs> Look at that. It's running. There we go. It's doing stuff. Ah, uh, no, this is interesting though. The route. Wait, why is 
Um, Cannot list resource routes. So I think, um, keep in mind the operator SDK is written, I'm, I may be wrong in saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm pretty sure it's written kube centric. So what gets created is not gonna oh. have, it's not gonna default the open shift constructs like routes in there. You're right. Um, so that. we're going to need to explicitly add that to the route, especially if this thing's being donated to. I stand more. I feel more confident in this this comment now, especially seeing as this is a CNCF project. Now they're not going to generate that roles with things like routes because then it's going to stop running on vanilla cube mm -hmm. when we go to deploy it, and that's going to be really bad. So we need to have added this to add in the routes um, to the role permissions. Yeah, so we need to um, so let's go back over here. So we need to go to deploy, um, and then this is a role, right? And then we need to come down here and just add it, right? Yeah, so it's an API group. Uh, Open API. shift is uh, Oops. and then it's I think it's right openshift.io. Is it really? I think I believe so. Let's let's see. Let's see if you should be able to check. Just do an OC get. Uh, we have a route. Just look at the template we created. Uh, the template would be. Let me close this. Oops, not deploy. It's um, roles. Route dot open shit dot Yeah. Nice. That's one of those things I always copy and paste and I never stop and read, but if I did, I would remember it in the future. Yeah. But that makes total sense. Anyone in the chat has any help for us? No. Okay. No, I think we're good here. Someone's talking okay. about a serious star like fit. <laughs> <laughs> and I then... do like that. I, I kind of, I, I love the uh, Wikipedia drop-ins here every time we bring up one of these examples, which is mm -hmm. amazing. So verbs. So what do we want to do? Do you want to create? Create, we need, we need to create. We probably need to get. We just do that. Can we, yeah, we can just do that for verbs. I'm surprised the other ones don't do that. Yeah, because th these are like really explicit. Essentially, it's like all of them. I can't think of anything that's not in there. Yeah. But maybe again, they're making it easier. So I would go through and I would pick and choose what to delete as compared to a star. So here, so I can know why, why that, right? Create, delete. Uh, I'll just type it out. Get list. You want to hear? Um, <laughs> you came here to watch Patch. me type some YAML. Update. Patch. Update. Watch. 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 Might as well, right? Do you have a mechanical keyboard? I no. Okay. I have a Logitech here. Because you, you sound like me. Because I'm a hard typer too. Where it sounds like it's a yeah. mechanical keyboard. It's well. It's it's. They have pretty deep buttons, but it's not. Well, and it's a mechanical keyboard, but it's not like the the ones that these uh like the cherries and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that. it's not a cherry. It's a mechanical keyboard. It's not like a one of the one of the cool the ones that the cool ones. kids use. It's just uh, like the third or fourth time I'm doing this, and I'm gonna ask you: Is there a reason why you do two spaces after the create before the f? Like, I feel like that's a muscle memory thing you got from someplace else. But like, yeah, I forget. I forget why I do that. I have no idea why I do that. I forget. Obviously, why I nothing wrong with it. This is purely. No, no, yeah. I mean, it'll it'll work. I just don't know where I got that from. It, it probably is from some obscure thing. Yeah, and that's what I'm. If you ever remember, let me know. If I ever remember, I'm I'll very you know, fascinated yeah. by it. So it looks like it's trying again. Exit successfully. I see routes in there, so we might have it. We might have it. We'll see. Get routes. There it is, Mos Eisley. So if I do uh, OC get pods. We actually have horizontal real estate to show us the routes. So yeah, exactly, yeah, the route. <laughs> <laughs> we want pod uh, service uh, route, right? That's because that's what we created. So we got the we got the scale of four for Planet Mos Eisley's. Right? We still have the, the operator uh, itself. That's what the fifth pod is, because remember, operator runs yeah, yeah. the pod. Yeah, that's the operator. Operator is nothing but a, but a pod. Um, the, the 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 training just a little side little side note that because you know when you say operators nothing but a pod i just remember when we had to do a training for the field we kept repeating operator is nothing but an effing pod but we actually would say the f word 
and we did we did that all training just so they just to drill drill it in their head. It's nothing special. It's just nothing but a pot. Yeah, Operate it's nothing smart. But a pot. It's really smart to do that because we yeah. talk about them like they're some magical thing. It's just a pot. It's just a pot. start there. Running in. <laughs> got the service address, and then we got the route. All right, which let's is copy really and paste cool. that route. Give me that route. Give me that route. Give me that route. Look at that. Boom, it's deployed from the that's awesome. Still no data, so that's fine. That's cool. we know we could do that again. We've 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 answered. You know, we can get some Ansible running, so it's very easy to say. Yep. Yeah, we can. You know, it's it's even Ryan, even more than that. I, I I hesitate to when I tell people it's just a pod. I say start with a pod because it's a special pod. I mean, it's got controller logic in there. It's got watches, and it's ultimately API privileges. Is pretty much it. Um, but it's a pod with conventions is probably a better way of saying it. Well, when you're first, when, when people are first learning it, that's perfect way to start, right? It's a yes. pod. All right. So the it only thing is something a magic is a pod. And then when you deep, dig deep down to the, to the logic, there's, there's a, a very more. special pod, right? Yeah. This pod is doing a lot. This pod have, is doing uh, a lot. This I'm doing the Dev Nation master course for uh, operators in two weeks. And I have a slide that literally just says it's a pod. And that's <laughs> all it says on it. I'm like, we're starting there. Like, start at the basics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. I mean, the fundamentals are what makes, uh, like practicing the fundamentals are what make things great. So having operators as just a pod makes things easier for everybody, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Oh, six we're, oh, yeah, that was three hours. Actually, over time. Went quick. We, yeah, three hours went quick. We're a little over. If, we're a little if bit you guys over. are good, I'm ready to wrap this thing up. Yeah, you thank are. you. Thank you, everyone, for hanging around this long. Yeah, um, like it's, this is a great this, audience. This long, great turnout. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, creating an Ansible operator, as you see, you know, from scratch, it might take you a little bit of time to get used to it, but once you're up and running, it becomes pretty, uh, pretty yeah. patternistic. Definitely. So. Definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, you can go to ansible.com slash operators to learn more. And we also have uh, reddet.ht slash operators uh, if you want to drop Is that our over. bit.ly? That's our bit.ly. Yes, link. that is our okay. bit.ly link. How do I know that? I actually <laughs> broke that last week uh, oh, trying to create uh, uh, a shortened link. link for <laughs> the workshop that I was working on. And it turns out the, the override toggle uh, was broken. So oh, I found a bug okay. and there reported that yeah. and it was yeah. fixed last Friday. They were like, oh. we tested it and we're sure we fixed it, Chris. <laughs> so, nice, nice. Yeah. So yeah, head over there to that and you can learn cool. a lot more about operators and also there's Ansible.com slash operators. Um, I worked on that page as well when I was over on that team. So yeah, there's some more resources for you. And yeah, guys, uh, have a great evening wherever you are. Links from that page is a, a brilliant o'reilly book that you guys want to check out as well from there oh who's the author of that yeah i don't know that? it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter yeah. i wonder who authored that yeah i, I, I wonder I how know. many misspellings are in the book yeah, i mean yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's just completely just dropping out yeah it just trust me just just get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> thankfully i feel less douchey about saying that thing get the ebook is is there's a link to it from that link oh okay cool, yes. cool. Not quite yeah yeah Josh or, Woodwork. Josh Woodwork. Time. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was all his fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all right, everyone. for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you, guys. you so all right, much. Everyone. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Take it easy. Bye.